Houston Race Park. They're in Houston. We're in Louisville, Horse Racing Nation headquarters, with our newest employee who joins us from Massachusetts. Brought the weather with her. Hopefully some winners as well. I'm Ed DeRosa. She's Sarah Albadwe. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Hopefully all of our technical difficulties are over now and we can get started with uh, handicapping this card for opening day, which is going off in 18 minutes. 18 minutes. A few minutes behind our scheduled start, but 30 minutes is a long time to talk about any race. So hopefully it'll work to our advantage. Uh, but really overall, uh, just looking at this 10 race card, Sarah, and there's been a lot of excitement for playing Sam Houston, 12% takeout on the multi-race wagers. And if you've been to picks.horseracingnation.com, you know there's some maybe handicapping nuggets that can help you find winners or, more importantly, toss losers. That's what you and I have looked into the last week, and hopefully we can put into action today. Absolutely. Trying to put it all together, and hopefully we have some interesting insight available to you. If uh, you haven't found it already on horseracingnation.com, there's a whole pamphlet out about post position bias, different trainers, different um, jockeys ship, shipping in, different horses, and everything is available on there to get all your tips and tricks to uh, succeed today. Tips and tricks. I like it. Uh, that's uh, what we're hopefully what we're here for. for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, race number one will kick us off. But just in general, I know this was somewhat of a new experience for you as was uh, driving in this morning in a place where people maybe aren't as used to snow as you are coming from New York and Massachusetts. But I know you look at Aqueduct a lot, bigger races, et cetera. Texas, definitely different. What was sort of your approach to handicapping a brand new circuit? Um, after getting all of our information from Horse Racing Nation, it was kind of just, you know, a little bit of the same type of strategy, but also um, a little bit of newness to the puzzle of horse racing. I'm excited to see how things play out with the one turn versus two turns, a little bit of uh, warmer weather, um, starting off the meet with uh, certain horses coming in that might be some short price favorites that we might be able to beat here. That is definitely something we are looking forward to in race number two. You wrote a whole article about it. There's an obvious favorite. It starts the early pick four. There is no pick five, but for those uh, maybe looking to jump into those multi-race pools right off the rip, there is still the 12% takeout on the pick three, double wagering as well. I love the fact that with the low takeout pick three, it's a dollar minimum as well because just think a lot of people think, oh, 50 cent pick three and they spread. And uh, if you can really uh, go beyond the obvious with the dollar pick three, I think that's an opportunity. So I'm certainly going to be jumping on in early. Unfortunately, uh, the horse I do have on top in race one and there were some scratches is the favorite. Speaking of number two, who's currently six to five. I'm curious to see these horses on the tra track, not because that's something I'm good at doing, but I know that that's a skill set that you have. A lot of horse players really don't. Uh, you're actually uh, ridden horses before, et cetera. Uh, how'd you realize that there's an edge to being able to handicap what you see in real time? Well, I mean, they're animals, and if they don't want to do it that day or something's bothering them or they you know, woke up on the wrong side of the stall just like us uh... – might not be feeling it that day and they might not put in the same kind of performance that they might show in their past performances. So it's always good to be in tune to what's happening right in that moment since they are very much of the moment and uh, we'll change that. Don't would, worry. Would you say it's uh, an energy thing or do you pick up, I'm sure both over the long course of looking at as many races as we will, but is it typically a horse isn't feeling it today or do you actually notice something physical that you think could hurt their chances it's a little bit of both um i'm definitely better at the behavior side of things than the confirmation and um you know way of going the biomechanics so to speak that's definitely not as much my wheelhouse but um you know there's a little bit of both you can definitely see if one's a little <laughs> bit uh you know maybe stiff in some places a little more dominant in other places as far as the way that they move but it's more just you know how are they acting and things like that uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you tuned into it. All right. Well, I know we're really excited to get to race two because you have a favorite you're against. It's the first pick four of the meeting, 12% takeout. Uh, but we do have an opener to get through first. And the reason I say that is because race two is a sprint. And there's tons of information we uncovered uh, when it comes to sprint races at Sam Houston, whether it's the post, whether it's the running style, plenty to look into there. Uh, that's not in play in race one because this is a mile race, two turns, which kudos 
to the racing secretary. I love meets that start out in the uh, right in front of the stands. But uh, right now we're looking at the shipper report, Sarah. This is something at Horse Racing Nation that Gary Palmasano from Churchill Downs in particular really loves. And what this tells you is the win percentage and the impact value of where horses ship from coming into Sam Houston. So at the top, no surprise, most horses have made their previous start at Sam Houston sometime throughout the meet. They'll race two, three times at the meet. So that adds up pretty quickly. Next up, though, is Remington Park. And that's kind of the circuit with Oklahoma. Just a 12% win percentage. So not, you know, overly a ton of winners, but they have a lot of horses as well. The impact to me is what's most valuable here. 3%, not a huge number, but again, with that many starters, Sarah, and I see 3%, hey, it's positive. A lot of red on here anyway. Most importantly, though, what I thought was really interesting, and this was in that ebook that you and I talked about earlier, which is free at picks.horseracingnation.com. If you had flat bet Remington Park shippers uh, coming into uh, opening week last year, you'd show a flat flat bet profit. That's all you had to do is bet horses coming from Remington. So uh, to me, that's super interesting. It shows maybe recency is valuable, horses that recently raced uh, on the circuit. And that's something I'm going to keep in mind. Uh, throughout the day. So maybe more detailed stats when we look at the sprints next, but the shipper report I thought was pretty beneficial for the start of the meet. Absolutely. And I think another point in there is that a lot of your Oakland horses are going to be bet down quite a bit, especially ones for certain trainers, and they don't necessarily run as well as you might think that they do. Yeah, Oakland, uh, 10% winners. So about the same as Remington, but that impact, they clearly get over bet Louisiana Downs, just 3% winners. Uh, and that sort of speaks Louisiana Downs, their thoroughbred meet ends in September. So that somewhat speaks to the recency issue too, is some of these layoffs, maybe not uh, worth playing. Fairgrounds, a big win percentage, but a low impact. So they're over bet as well. So uh, people that kind of pop into Sam Houston, they want the low takeout. They're playing a circuit they're not familiar with, maybe overvaluing that class from Oaklawn and fairgrounds and uh, not as much valuing as they should Remington Park. So keep that in mind throughout the meet, throughout today. Uh, we've got 11 minutes left. Uh, I guess we're still seeing most of these in the stall, so you probably haven't had a chance to get too much info, but anything sticking out to you in the opener? Um, speaking of value, did you expect the two to be a three to two favorite in here? Because I know that's uh, one of your picks going forward. Well, uh, I actually thought the two would be odds on. And I would say the, you know, in this type of race, so you, would we have to start with six horses? So we lost a third of the field, including I would have thought the one would probably have been three to five if so. uh, that horse had started. Once there was that scratch, the two seemed pretty obvious to me. I would actually say if you're looking to make a win bet here, three to two is fair. I guess that makes sense. And also, um, you know, she's going to be coming in from Remington as well. So that's something to keep in mind. She's got a little bit of a shipper report positive on her going forward. Um, but how do you think the speed is going to play out in here with the three coming out as well? Uh, well, and at a mile, I think that, and I'm trying to bring up uh, the, uh, the feed here. So I apologize for uh me being uh, listless, but I did want to bring up the live feed, uh, which we will have courtesy of uh, RTN, and we will turn it off. Uh, there we go. We will turn it off for the actual race, but uh, it will be interesting to uh, see what these look like and what you're getting a look of yourself, plus uh, give people – oh, now the four has clicked down to even money. Uh, yeah, I would have to think, Sarah, that for the first race of the meet, even at a mile, which is not as speed favoring as the sprint – Whoever gets the lead in here is going to be a big favorite after a quarter mile, I think. I would agree with you, and I think that might end Which up Which favors being, the six, right? Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think that might end up being the six. Now three has come out since this might be the only other horse that wants to be in that position to be up front early. Um, I wouldn't have picked this horse on top, but with the other speed of this race coming out, it might end up being the choice that I go with since – she might have a pace advantage here and nobody else might want to go get her. Yeah, that, I mean, I have found that that might be enough. What level is this race? I did this not is know. $5,000. Yeah, I, you know, at the lower level too, it just seems like they don't like to pass right. and, you know, getting getting the lead could be enough. What, uh, as a handicapper, what do you sort of look at to uh, 
you know, horses who maybe run on the front end is the kind of the first obvious thing, but what else is uh, in your wheelhouse in terms of trying to uh, figure out who might be on the lead in a race? Oh, boy. Um, I think that you have to look at, you know, where they've been in the past and what kind of um, body language they've shown in those races. So have they been comfortable in whatever position that they've been in? As in, like, are their ears going back and forth? Are they not resisting their rider? Are they, you know, settling into a pretty even stride and moving nicely? Are they running with their head up in the air, ears back? Maybe, you know, riders trying to take a hold of them. They look super uncomfortable. So you want to look for a horse that's comfortable with where they're at and see if, um, you know, if they had some sort of tendency to not really feel that way in their last start, then they might be trying a different tactic next time out if, you know, whoever is connected to them is paying attention to that and sees the same thing as well. Uh, I'm going to give a plug for my former employer because after 10 years, I uh, de definitely learned, you know, somewhat how to uh, use uh, some of this stuff and, and be a believer. And, uh, you know, it's pretty clear from here that bold legend uh, is now the lone speed with the other uh, E being early out of the race. Uh, the number that, per, that comes after the letter is the speed points, early speed points. And again, bold legend, really the only one who has any consistent form showing some kind of speed. So uh, that definitely uh, favors him. I'm pretty surprised as the uh, feed comes off the live odds uh, that the four is taking that much money against the two. Uh, break at dawn does have uh, four Kieran speed points, and I do think overall is the better horse. So to me, break at dawn is the biggest threat to Bold Legend going gate to wire. But uh, I absolutely, uh, I would say at these prices, would back the, the two even over the six. Yeah, I would say maybe the four is taking some money because she did fire a bullet work um, last out going five furlongs in 102, and that was the best of, I think, 28 that day. So maybe people are taking a look at that workout and having that in mind for a reason to throw some money her way. But I just didn't really see any reason to support this horse on top. Um, you know, with scratches coming out in a four horse field, anything can happen, but it's not my top pick in here. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the five since we only have four horses in here? We can get through them all here. I, 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 I would classify the five as the least likely winner. You think so? Yeah. Do you feel as though maybe too much to do and not as fast? It's yeah. a pretty tough combo. I feel as though she maybe had a little bit of an excuse last out. There was a slight bobble at the start, but I watched that break about three or four times, and I was each time like, that wasn't really much of an excuse. <laughs> but, however, at this lower level, you know, if they're only, you know, $5,000 claimers, any sort of slight inconvenience might be enough to really throw them off their game. And maybe it was a little too much for her. You know, she had some prior figs that could be competitive, but I feel as though she's kind of off her best form lately. I think – you know, I hate to punt with this type of statement, but with this short of a field and sort of the wild card of how the pace shakes out anyway, I'm not going to be shocked regardless, but it is a pair mutual game uh, is, you know, I've tried to write about over the, the past few days and, you know, in the next race, maybe hush hush is a lean for a lot of people, not right. us, but not us, you know, but somebody. yeah. And I mean, the horse fits. <laughs> so I think if you're looking for a lean, that could be one. Uh, I personally like the three a lot in race three. Uh, I think the first time starters are going to have a tough go. So yeah, I kind of see it as, okay, if you can beat hush hush, I'd really like to just get through this race. Uh, I would probably just use two and six and then press the two. Although it even money now it's kind of getting like, do I want to play? Uh, but being against hush hush, I think is the opportunity in the dollar pick three. Absolutely. Um, I'm surprised that you're interested in the three and the third race, but I guess that makes sense. Um, this is a horse that I actually wanted to uh, leave out of my top three, but we can talk about it in a little bit. We will. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll get to it a little more because with the pick four, we'll want to talk about those races. But it is the third leg of the pick three. Right. Uh, and one thing, and I'll bring up that shipper report again, uh, first time starters, 7% negative impact, not not necessarily a number where I'm going to be like, oh, I'm against any first-time starter. All that said, opening week at Sam Houston, first-time starters, just one won last year, and that was a Steve Asmussen horse who took some money. So uh, all of the first-time starters who were, I think, three to one or above, none of them even finished second, let alone one. It's a new year, different purse structure. You always have to – play the price. And if you have a reason for liking a horse, that should be enough. This alone isn't enough where I wouldn't play a first time starter, but 
given that I like the three and the firsters in the third, like to me, that's maybe a place to, to plant my flag. So that's what I was thinking there. Any clues on the track? Um, as far as a paddock pick, if I was going to give you one, I would say the two is looking pretty revved up. So maybe we'll be sitting close, especially from the rail now, um, and has a good chance to maybe sit up either right off of the six or perhaps end up being handled a little bit more aggressively to go right to the front. Um, five's looking a little bit more keyed up. Oh, the two settled a little bit now, but I would say paddock pick wise, I feel even more confident to kind of leave the four out of anything that I'd be playing. Um, as far as like a win wager in here. Um, maybe that not is not the best bang for your buck, so <laughs> to speak. But if I was going to be playing that first pick three, I would just use the two and six. All right, I'm. I think at this price, uh, I'm. I'm going to just single the two. So I'm we'll going. See what I am going on the record <laughs> of uh, leaning on the favor here, and and part of that comfort level again is being willing to uh, toss. Uh, the favorite in the next leg, Hush Hush, who I have not seen the doubles yet, uh, actually is not even favored. So uh, maybe a recalibration is necessary. However, the seven, who uh, you did not pick as high as I thought you might, uh, but myself and a buddy of mine who actually lives in Houston, he lives for Sam Houston, Mike C., uh, picked the seven second. I have on top at 20 to one morning line. And based on these doubles, uh, it does appear that we're going to get a nice price on number seven in leg two. Uh, the three is favored with the four. I didn't see how much money's in the pool, but uh, it looks like we're we're in a situation where the three's taking enough money that I think we can uh, twenty seven hundred. No superfecta wagering here. Sorry, shocking. Yes. <laughs> there is there is try. Oh, no, they got rid of the try too, oh, okay. and no show, uh, which. Uh, also makes some sense. It does so indeed. yeah, this is uh, hopefully they will not be judging their handle performance uh, for the meet, <laughs> projecting it based on the opening race card where they lost a third of the field. But uh, yeah, four to five. That's it. That's it for me. The deuce. Uh, uh, six to one on the four seems much more fair. So I'm, glad that are, <laughs> I'm making a little bit more sense now. I was going to yeah. say starting off with a new track. If I can't predict at least where we're going to end up as far as some odds in here, then I'm really out of depth and we shouldn't be listening to anything <laughs> I have to say for the rest of this. But this makes more sense and leaves me feeling a little bit more confident going forward. Yeah, and uh, let's see the six threes, fourteen bucks. So all right, well we know we're against Hush Hush. I'm starting to get nervous at the two. They're going to go off, and it's one of those, you know, in the gate at four to five and then off at two to five. So probably going to sit on my hands in terms of a win wager. But um, pick three, I'm using five, six, seven in the next uh, and, and the three in race three. So that's three bucks. And then maybe a one, two, three, four in race three, which would be another 12. Um, I, I see no exotic opportunity in this race. Yeah, no, it's not worth it. Yeah. I would say so with the four horse field and these prices. I mean, I, I could maybe like if, if the six weren't the odds it were, I could see, well, if those are the two that you think are just going to be on the lead, then OK, just two six and maybe they go all the way around. But yeah. uh, this just doesn't yeah. seem to be the case here. Uh, I do not have the chat up. I should have done that. Uh, we certainly welcome uh, if people want to uh, chime in. Let's see if. Uh, the, the trouble is when I have it on, then we're on a delay and I catch it out of the corner of my eye and that's, it on. that's yeah. very annoying. So, but no, we got, uh, well, dirty rug 22 says the five is going to win. Oh, okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Three, <laughs> I, I mean, that's what makes horse racing great because you know, that, that was the one I was absolutely most against and, uh, there's someone who likes them. So I mean, we That's got a great. lot of options in this four horse field. I would hope that somebody has a uh, something to say about each and every horse. That's true, as as we did. We we've exhausted, and I'm actually glad we didn't come on at four thirty because oh, no. I think we'd be talking about their I'd third be third dams. Already. We'd be talking about their third dams at this point. <laughs> uh, well, as they're going in the gate, uh, a reminder. Uh, that we have plenty of uh, great information at uh, horseracingnation.com, picks.horseracingnation.com. And not only that, uh, but we're going to be doing this every Thursday, as you can see, handicapping live stream Thursdays at 4.30. So it's you opening day. Yeah, well, <laughs> I am. We'll see how it goes for you today. Uh, but... <laughs> 
All right, well, they're in the gate, so I'm going to uh, turn that off and uh, wish I had more to show you than uh, my visage. I guess we can go back to the uh, the PPs at least. Uh, you know, people don't have to uh, necessarily see all of us. but uh, Come on, just cheer. Come on. What? That's fun, though, and it is being <laughs> recorded. So uh, they're in the gate. Uh, I'm on the two. Six for me, I guess. Six, all I'll right. Spice it up. Two, six. Uh, son was born on the 26th, so that's always a... Uh, a swami for me. Uh, let's see, any other? Uh... 626 is an important day. It's Why also Stitch Day. Stitch Day? Yeah, six experiment, 626. The little alien, the Disney alien. There's somebody out there that knows <laughs> oh, exactly what I'm talking now about. Now, Lilo? Lilo? Lilo. 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 We got to watch some Disney I said, movies. At least I said your last name better than that. <laughs> That's true. All right, so as expected, there's the two and the six <laughs> right up front. Actually, a little more compact than uh, I thought. Maybe uh, the, the two trailers would be a little more strung out. I mean, they're going pretty slow. But uh, I guess I could watch it. Tony D there. said 2 6 ice cold exacta. Okay. Dirty Red said it was just a gut feel. Uh, let's see. So he's betting via Oakland anywhere, which uh, they appreciate. Thank All you. Right. I mean, they're walking, Yeah, so. 50, I mean, the no excuse, I, I guess, for any of them, if any of them have punch. And uh, I, I would say that the two is in deep water at this yeah. point. That is it. Unless it's a rope-a-dope, but uh, nah. Nah, I think is over for him. Yeah, and there's the four. Bullet work did come in handy. <laughs> wow, 117. Well, I hope the five wins now for our uh, yeah, dirt, in the chat. dirty rag. Go. Might get up. Mm. No, it's gonna happen. No, oh, the rebreak. Oh, I think they're gonna have to look at this they're one. Take a look at they're that. gonna take a look. All right, what do you think? Should we do a head to head DQ or not? It looked to me like he may have been the one. Changing paths, though. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. You don't agree? I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. They're going to take a peek at that one, though. Well, let's pull it up. Now that the Inquiry. race is over. Yeah. Uh, the Lumber Gal. Do you remember the Lumber Guy? I sure do. I bet on him. Yeah. Great, great puns with the lumber guy. Absolutely. Now, now the Those aren't guy. the horses' names that are in this race, so that's interesting. Uh, well, I am uh, extremely uh, happy that this race was not a part of the pick five. Uh, because it doesn't <laughs> exist. Uh, <laughs> well, I just mean that it wasn't slotted there because right. uh, I, I literally could not have been more wrong. Uh, We're off to a strong start here. Strong you and start. I. We're doing but, great. Um, the two fought gallantly for third, it looks like, in the non-existent ah, yes. try. Came back. For Came that back. Try on the six. You're right. Is there a way for us to get the sound thing off from the middle oh, of that? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's how everyone knows it's Naira Betts. Uh, well, uh, I'm curious. So uh, uh, let's see if we can pull up uh, the chat here. Uh, but I would be curious what uh, our watchers think. Uh, it looked to me like the five was the one changing paths, even on the replay. I don't know. We'll have to see a head on. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? Who was the one changing paths there? <laughs> Should I ask? He's watching, he's watching golf stream. He right. agrees with me. He agrees with you. Yeah. Where's my dog? What does she think? She's missing. Nope, here's the head on. Okay. Yep. Four shifted out. Yeah, that's... Uh, All right, I called my first thing right. <laughs> I, I mean, the only... I, I don't know the rules in Texas. I, I it could be, you know, if they think the four was the winner anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's that I, cost of placing rule or not. I don't think that's what's going to be uh, here. It, that looks like a DQ me. to me. What do we think in the Although chat? Although Dirty, Ra Dirty Rag, who picked the five, 
says no change. Really? Uh, dumb finish from the five jockey. Andrew Myers says should stay up. So eh, I guess it, one of those could go either way. Oops, I didn't mean to like, this is like uh, Inception here. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Never been smaller. <clears throat> We'll have to see what happens. I don't know if it's like that cost, cost them a placing rule or what, but I'll have to figure that out as we continue to cap Sam Houston because uh, I'm still very new at this track. So. Well, and again, thankfully that was only a part of a pick three and not pick four or pick five, which I mm -hmm. typically put more into because uh, either way, not uh, necessarily the result we would have uh, – well, I shouldn't say we. Dirty Rag is hoping for a, a put up, but uh, the longest price on the board finished first under the wire. Uh, not atypical. What? Uh, I mean, they went so slow. So slow. But the top two were nowhere at the end. What? Any? Yeah, I think that it's too early to judge since we're talking about a five thousand dollar claimer to start, and I didn't have the you know greatest of confidence in either of these horses as far as being real speed horses. I think it's kind of like a You've inherited that role since the three came out, and it's not like that one was going to be flying up front anyway. But um, I just remembered that I put the five in my stable doodle stable, so maybe. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Maybe I did something right here. We'll see. What was the morning line? Oh, boy. What was the morning line? It was 10 to 1. Uh, so there you go. And, yeah. then, and then you end up getting the short field, which yeah. is, is big for that. And uh, for those who thought they were onto something with the two – uh, that's a terrible start in a game like that because sure beaten open lengths uh, mm -hmm. and spent some money on it as well. Uh, Your drink koozie should be on the way. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, yes, we do accept swag here at uh, The Nation. Uh, from anyone. We're hoping to get some swag here to have as well. Taking a while to look at it, I, I kind of I would have said if it were this open and shut. Uh, yeah, I think the longer they, they look, uh, oh, unofficial as is. Yeah. Uh, Hmm. Hmm. Well, I was gonna say you should. It, it is longer. nice that I have no root in this case. Though, yeah, it doesn't matter to us. Because if I had been like, oh, the four is great at nine to two, I'd be really sweating this. But yeah, leading them into the winner circle. Yeah. So seems like it's gonna stay. Obed Sanchez and uh, Brett Davidson, uh, I believe, was one of our trainers on the not so great list in January. So oh, I wonder if he's like, well, I'll show those here. guys. Yeah, he was like, I'm I done like with it. them. Quattro. All right. So we're dead wrong to start it off. I love it. You can get it out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's all there is to that. I've Unofficial. been wrong about more things. It's fine. Yes. No, there will be <laughs> plenty, to, plenty to be wrong about uh, as we uh, turn the page, literally, literally, in that case. All one page for me. This is uh, for those who have not <laughs> used the erasable notebooks. I love mine. Um, I have a little bit of a different strategy, but that's okay. We all do. Uh, that's part of the fun, I think. And uh We've learned right. that we like all the same kinds of pens. Yes, that was uh, very interesting. Uh, and this that's my I, prized possession now. I do think that handy, like if you pulled handicappers, that would be the pen that came up most. Yes, I think. The Pilot G205 versus the Pilot G207. And if anyone involved with them is watching and wants to send a set of pens to Ed and I, <laughs> more important, we'll take drink koozies. <laughs> Uh, Disco Partner pulls very light compared to opening race last year. Uh, I guess I would ask Disco Partner how many horses were in the opener last year. And right. if I, I, I should have looked. Shame on me. I thought there was a pick five when they had ten races on races one and six. Oh. So that would have helped yeah. as well. But about that. Um, we'll see what happens here with the pick four. Uh Gary P., who I mentioned loves the shipper report, mm -hmm. said that was a bad call. He wanted the DQ. I mean, it would have helped me out with my uh, free contest. That's there, right. So, hey, it is what it is. I, I'm, as often as I do have hot takes and want to have an opinion on everything, without knowing the letter of the law at Texas, is it if it's cost the five a placing, I could see why they kept it as is. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a foul is a foul, like unfortunately I know all too well is the rule in Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, that that had had to have come down. So yeah. to, well, to me, if it's, anybody knows and is in the chat, feel free to let us know because I'd love to learn. So we yes. can uh, be aware of that going forward too because uh, I could look it up, but I won't. So 
Pat, Pat <laughs> Cummings must not be in the chat because he would surely let us know. And we'll ask him if we don't get a straight answer. 20 minutes till race two. Pick four time, finally. Excited about that. And uh, Apparently the one's out. The one is out. Is that new information? I had the one nowhere on me, so yeah, I didn't either, maybe that's why I didn't notice. Didn't oh, I did know that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You didn't share that with me? Well, I didn't have it on my grid, so oh. it was dead to me anyway. Fine. Yep. I share my candy. You don't share that's the scratches. True. It is what it is, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll share a winning opinion here because Hush Hush opened at 7 to 5, and you and I are both against – and uh, what a way to start a pick four if you can beat a favorite like that. Why don't you like? Um, this horse is stepping up in class after running a second first time out. And I'm not going to say that she ran a bad race because I don't, I don't think that. I think she ran fine. But I think that going in as the favorite in the field like this where you have a lot of lightly raced horses, um, a lot of room for improvement, um, there's a lot of value, I think, to be had in here. And she wasn't exactly it for me, um, although – I'll give a little shout out to her connections that mentioned something to me on Twitter because I hope she runs really well for you. I just don't want to better. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think uh, now I'm drawing a blank on who it was, but that person mentioned that they own a piece of the horse with the partnership and lamenting that this horse is going to be favored now, even money. And no one seems to be picking hush hush. And from a speed standpoint, certainly fast enough, uh, faster than most of these. But as you noted, some upside with a few of them. And one horse who does not need to improve, the big question mark is the layoff and coming into here off that kind of layoff. And uh, the best race is, I think, now two years ago. Uh, but number seven has a race that is either as fast as Hush Hush or maybe even faster and faster than the rest of these. And at the price, I'm willing to gamble that if she's ready to run at this configuration, she just needs to get out in front, and that could be enough. Absolutely. And they're not showing it at this moment, but we got to see the live odds for a second for this race, and she's already clicked down from a 20 to 1 morning line to 7 to 1. Mm -hmm. So apparently a lot of people are either paying attention to us or doing their own homework mm -hmm. here because I think she could be the lone speed. And she does have a third at this track to her credit as well. So she's definitely interesting. Um uh, in the article that I wrote about this, I definitely mentioned her in, um, I think, as the last horse to mention as one that could outrun their odds. And then also, I think the number eight, Good Liquor, getting back to the dirt after a couple of turf tries. Hasn't really had a fair chance on dirt. Was shut off in her only other um, dirt attempt with kind of like fractures being far off. And was um, there was a DQ in there because she was bumped in the lane as well. So... We'll see what happens with her. She might be a better turf horse, but at least they're giving the dirt another try, and I think she could be competitive here. Remington Park, shipper, so we there know we that uh, that's uh, not too bad at times. So we spoke to Austin Gustaf Gustafson, who does not have any in today, but a big-time January trainer, and he was on a spaces I did last night with a few others. He mentioned uh, not only pay attention to the horses shipping from the local circuit, but also those who have had a workout at the track. And unfortunately, that does not apply to either of the two we just mentioned. And Mom's Prayer, in fact, coming in from Delta. But this will be her second race off a long, long layoff. And that Delta race, uh, admittedly, was uh, extremely poor. Uh, but... One thing I did like, again, it was against better, so open maiden special weight rate, uh, race. This is a $15,000 claimer. Mm -hmm. uh, I did like, if you look at uh, the early pace rating on Brisnet, and I peaked at a few other things, so it doesn't really matter where you're looking, uh, actually kind of broke the latch pretty quick, got the first call, and had a pretty decent early pace rating against better. Now drops in class. Also worth noting, seven furlongs at Delta is two turns. Uh, so now cuts back to uh, the one-turn sprint at uh, Sam Houston. I just think if she's able to get the lead, that could be enough. And what did you say she opened at? Uh, it was 7-1 to one that seven I saw. To one. Okay, so still one. okay. Still I mean, some value, but everyone's paying attention. Yeah, uh, a 10-1 to one would, would be my absolutely play her to win mm -hmm. price on that one. Uh, so you mentioned. Mentioned the eight. Uh, you've not actually. I don't think we've gotten to your pick. We haven't. So uh, I'll just scroll up a little bit, and that is, is uh, Bearing Special, who is also the aforementioned uh, Mike C. Uh, his last name is harder to pronounce than yours, which is why I just say C. <laughs> uh, but he's in Houston, and uh, I know he's on this one as well. Why do you like? 
Um, this horse is only racing for the third time. We're dropping in for the tag for the first time. Can sit close up. Um, the best figure, buyer speed figure of anyone in this field belongs to this horse at the moment. And then also, um, where was I? There was a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of trouble for this horse in the stretch for, on debut and seemed to be running a little bit greenly. There's a horse coming in from the outside. There was the 10 that was um, closing in another horse from the inside, um, you know, making it a little bit of like a tight space for her. And I think that can easily intimidate an experienced horse that's just running for the first time. Maybe it wasn't, you know, significant as far as contact. However, there was a little bit of, you know, a little bit of crowding, maybe made her feel a little bit discouraged. And then second time out, um, you know, trying to close down the lane it was very green about not wanting to switch leads and very reluctant to do so. And depending on what the price is, I might be playing this one to win. This might be my single going into this pick four as well. Uh, I think it is a, a pretty juicy pick four. So, uh, <laughs> encourage, uh, everyone to get involved. Uh, thankfully did not blow on my capital on that, uh, terrible one to two shot in the opening leg and, uh, actually getting a, we don't have it up on the screen, but looking at the double will pays and the six, uh, actually the five is going to be favored based on those. Uh, and then a, a pretty big gap actually to the three and six. I did have number five as an A you picked third as well. Uh, definitely a situation though, Sarah, and that, you know, that's why it's, I mean, it's fun to handicap and try to figure out winners and pick horses. But at the end of the day, until you actually see the board, uh, I would say I have very little interest in this horse as the favorite. Me too. Uh, you know, this horse is lightly raced, was only raced one time, but that debut was not really anything to impress me. What did you think? Uh, well, uh, the, certainly the public wasn't expecting much because the horse was 80, 84 to 1 on debut. And, and ran that way. And ran that way, yep. Uh, broke, uh, almost had one beat at the break. Uh, was within about four lengths of the leader. So, I, you know, I guess showed some uh, competitiveness, for lack of a better word, but was able at least to get in the mix and then completely dropped anchor. I will say it is tough. Uh, you know, you always hear to debut at seven furlongs given that the horse was 84 to one as well and was not on Lasix uh, and was debuting as a late season three-year-old, there was probably plenty of reasons to think this horse needed a race. Now gets Lasix, does have a work locally, which uh, appears to be pretty quick, four furlongs and 48 and two. And Lane Luzzy told us that the track is slow and pay attention to the works. Don't uh, be discouraged. Uh, he even said 50 seconds for four furlongs. Again, I was attracted to this horse and made an A, thinking that the three would be the favorite. But uh, based on that double, this horse is going to be three to two, eight to five, and that's just too short for me. Me too. This horse didn't really interest me that much. It's kind of one that I'd want to wait and see what we get from them second time out. Maybe you know this is a horse that I'd be interested in a little bit more third time out, depending on how they ran today, but not one that I'd be willing to take a short price on whatsoever. Um, especially if the six is a greater price than the source, I would, I would definitely be all in on the six here. <clears throat> well, was there anyone else in here that interested you? Um, nah, no. Um, you know, I think one of those situations though, I will say just in, you know, constructing tickets and sort of giving my opinions. Uh, I do like the three in the next, uh, I like the eight in the fourth race, which appears to be everyone's top pick there uh, the, of the other picks I looked at. This is where we agree for sure. Yeah. I have written possible single in multis. So. And I love the name and uh, it reminds <laughs> me of a, the Hold Steady song. And, La and Lane Luzzy is uh, riding. So, I mean, it's just You're all. Queen of the Lane. Queen of the Lane. I'll have to get you a crown. Queen of the Lane Luzzy. <laughs> uh, Scepter is what I would prefer, actually. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll make a note of it. Um, um, I think that horse will, you know, if anyone if you looked at who all is singling horses, that would be it. So I say all that saying I have some pretty strong opinions, even to the point where I'd be willing to single one or both of those horses. And in that case, that's where it's like, OK, I don't like the four at all. Um, and in fact, looking at it, I, I don't think I could spend any money on it. So I'm just going to move on and say I will not be using the four. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, neither of us talked about the two uh, big blue note. And this horse uh, does have its best brisk net speed rating is uh, sprinting on turf at Remington Park, but did come in a sprint does come from Remington Park, which we have noted before, does have that positive ROI in part because of horses who pay $20, $30 like this one would. 
I would not want to get beat in the pick four by the two if I'm right in the other three races. That's fair enough. But I think the biggest thing that you just mentioned to me about this horse is turf. And I have written it And he here, is by Mr. Nightwinger. Prefers the turf. <laughs> so I, agree. I see what you're saying. It's hard to argue that this horse would prefer the turf. Uh, certainly the pedigree leans in that direction as well. Uh, by far, the two best speed ratings out of the four were turf versus the two dirt starts. I also feel like this is a $15,000 maiden claimer where the two favorites, the three and five, have holes that we both pick. Five to five. But Nick and Trey, they both agree. like your horse. Uh, so we're the, all going to lose together. Yeah, cl- I love it. Clear situation where it's like, man, what, what am I missing that you know, you're know you so bullish on the third choice? Did you watch the replay? I did not. Oh. Not a big replay guy. No, I feel like if you're a numbers person, the numbers I'm not should tell. Right, yeah. so exactly. Uh, both stick of with. Our to the table. I, I will say though. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's it. Like you watch a replay, Emily Gullickson, uh, who I used to work with at, at Bristnet, does the optics stuff. Like I know she's diligently watching races. Mm-hmm. Scott Shapiro and Joe Christofek with Churchill. Like that's how they handicap. So when they come up with something based on that method, I pay attention. Whereas you know, for me, it's seeing some pattern that maybe someone missed or whatever. But I will say for sure, more so than the replay stuff on the track to me is like where I'm just a believer, whether it's Maggie, whether it's you, whether it's someone like Pete Dane. Oh, or, I'm definitely you know. not in the same class as Maggie. Well, but. <laughs> I just mean that that style yes, of, you absolutely. know, it's just a skill I do not have at all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's important. So I'm definitely eager knowing that we're against the three and five here, uh, what you think of the others and, uh, I, the, the four uh, 25 to one, I just can't like, I yeah, mean, that would be a complete shock. It doesn't make sense to me. Hush Hush looks good. Um, you know, she makes sense as the favorite. She's got a good bounce to her. That's what I like to call it when they, uh, you know, move their head up and down, like in that way when they're on the track versus this way, which doesn't look quite as good <laughs> to me. Um, as you can see there. And I'll, uh, I'll pull we'll up this post over. parade actually. Yeah. We got all the videos. All the video. <laughs> I don't love no, that. I was going to say that. So. <laughs> it's, um, it's one of those things when you're watching a horse warm up, there's certain things that it's either it's really good or it's really not so good <laughs> um, when they're being a little bullish with the pony. Um, Seven looks good. Uh, I was noticing when we were just watching the paddock while we were talking, though, that if I was going to give anybody a little paddock nod, it would be the eight good liquor. liquor. Um, not that we have any good liquor at the moment here. but uh, There is some in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, I had a beer uh, one of the nights I did Turfway, and uh, it was two years old. So that, that ended An up. An aged not, beer. <laughs> ended up not being so good. But we should we should probably freshen up as we do more of these for, uh, especially come derby time. Restock. Uh, yeah, restock. Find out what Ron and Matt like. Right. And, uh, what do you have? Water? I, I'm having water, yes. Wow. Uh, get I, pretty I have a dry. Little monster here. Little monster. Uh, yeah, so the, the four, <laughs> man, I mean, I you just hate to like the all but one of the horses who are going to pay $60, yeah. but uh, that horse has shown absolutely nothing. Uh, looks yeah. like a spirited warm up, though. Yeah, riders got their feet out of the stirrups. Usually it's a sign that they're trying to keep them feeling a little bit calmer. We're staying with the pony, so. All in the spirit of keeping chill out there. Yeah, weather looks okay. They are fast, yeah. so. Hush, hush um, looks good. Uh, so yeah, my my biggest question now, and want to get into the the pick four a little bit more. We haven't touched on race five, which is the first turf, well, only turf the race only. of the day, first of the meet. Uh, but I'm definitely having some nerves about. Okay, what do I do with the the seven here? Five to one. Definitely a little lighter than I was yeah. hoping. I mean, I didn't. I feel like any time I look at a race and like, man, I'm actually excited to pick this horse at twenty to one. I kind of know I'm not going to get twenty to one, not because people are going to play because I do, but I look at very similar things to other people. So mm-hmm. if I saw it, others are as well. I'm still hoping for ten to one though, so we'll watch closely and, and make a bet if we minutes. get to that. Yeah, I got five minutes. So, um, who do you like in the fifth though? Since we're going to talk about that for a second to complete your uh, early pick four. In the fifth, uh, I'm somewhat spread. Admittedly, uh, I did go with number two on top, and uh, 
pull up uh, the PPs again. Uh, let's see. So I thought there. it was interesting. I've never seen a turf race. I don't think that's not a maiden or maiden claiming or a race for two year olds where all of the field except two of them are trying the turf for the first time. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I'm, that is interesting because Lone Star and Remington, it's not like this is a region that doesn't have that option. Right. Uh, these are newly turned uh, three-year-olds, so maybe that's this a part of it. Um, it's 10 to 1. I did go with number two, and I almost didn't because uh, the sire, uh, VE Day, has uh, pretty poor turf starts. But then I saw it was from very limited opportunities mm -hmm. and he's by English channel. So got the same thing in my notes right here. It, it, it is a small sample size. It's 10 to one. Uh, I just can't let that uh, deter me. And uh, they tried to stretch this horse out second time out uh, and they got the win from it. And now they get to stretch out again on turf. Grant Sires by English Channel has speed, which I think early in the meet, I, I just, I'm going to lean toward the speed horses mm -hmm. regardless of uh, distance and surface and uh, 10 to 1, and Obed Sanchez already has a win. I mean, that's uh, a... <laughs> Recency. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, in that race, I went with the 1, only because this is the only horse that has a win on the turf at a mile, which are the conditions today. And it might not be the best buyer speed figure to go off of, but this horse is also very lightly raced. We're putting the blinkers on. It's Carl Broberg, who does well here. Uh, Storch is in for the optional tag, but I'm going with the screwball. Screwball, yeah, I do like that name. Right. And I'm pulling. I mentioned uh, several times uh, in race one about some post stats uh, for race two, and we never actually mentioned them. So I'm I'm trying to pull them up. So I uh, want to give. Uh, we had this in that uh, in our free uh, newsletter, so you can see them yourself there. But uh, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, there we go. Make this a little bigger. All right. Uh, this is a tool that uh, HRN is, is helping some people develop. It's basically, uh, it's called TTT, as you see up there in the corner, which is kind of tic-tac-toe, um, which is, you know, kind of the, the style matrix it is, where it looks at running style, matches it up against posts. And these are for dirt sprints at Sam Houston in January of last year. So, you know, looking at, you know, the, the part of the meet where you're dealing with mostly shippers, horses who haven't had a race over the track most recently. And uh, I cut it off on the 30th because the 31st was the stakes day. So that's kind of a, a different animal. Uh, but as you can see, 55% wire to wire winners sprinting on the dirt, 38 and a half percent stalker, just 5.7% closers uh, makes it makes it really tough uh, at any sort of short price to take a horse that you don't think is going to be in the mix early. This is fair. However, we did see in that first uh, race, not too much from those <laughs> first two horses. We did. That was a yeah. route. You know. That was a route. Yes. Number one. And uh, number two, I would say, and, and I noted this early in the race, like for a four horse, which when we saw the fractions, it made a lot more sense. Right. But for a four horse field, like they were a little more bunched up than I expected early. I was kind of thinking single file, mm -hmm. um, you know, a five, six links separating all four, and that wasn't the case. So uh, we'll see what we get here. Certainly seems to be a, a slow track based on that one race, uh, right. but that was a lower level. There's more speed signed on here too. I know yes. we'll see the seven go to the front. Who do you think sitting right off? Uh... I would actually say I would if if hush hush is meant for this, he should be right there with the seven. Sure, she, excuse me. That's fair enough. Um, what do you think? I think the seven will go and use this. But seven's going. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So seven will go and use the speed, and I hope you know will be a decent amount in front and say catch me if you can. Especially at five and a half for longs might just go and go as long as she can for. Um, I think six and. Eight will be sitting a little bit close. Um, if Hush Hush is the goods and deserves the uh, the hype, not that we put any on her, but that everyone <laughs> else has, then uh, this should be hers to take. But we'll see what happens. We got zero minutes to post now. All right. And uh, I'm starting to think I'm not going to get up to 10 to 1. I, I can't play the 7 um, at that price to win, but definitely is in the mix uh, for me. Uh, 
for the pick four. Looking good on the six, just four. at the morning line. Yeah, you and Nick and Trey and Mike. Else. Mike C. <laughs> uh, one of those like you guys. Are you betting? Um, now that's now seven. I'm gonna have to have my finger on on the uh, on submit the but on the submit button. But uh, for pick four purposes at these prices, uh, I would say it's six, seven, eight for me uh, is my my primary uh, A plays. Yeah. Um, Again, leaning on the three and eight in the next two races, um, and, and I would use the the two as well. Just sort of uh, is I'm a, is I'm able to go deeper. Oh, yeah, one of those, one, yeah. one of those like you know, if the three and eight both win, and I'm marginally right in the last, like the, the two, I wouldn't want to let beat me. That's fair. Um, we have a very different strategy. strategy. I played the teeniest ticket of all. I for. <laughs> I have noticed, uh, and you know it's probably how I should be playing more often than not, but your, your tickets do uh, tend to be a little lighter than mine. Let's uh, I just have a different bankroll because uh, moving's expensive. Moving <laughs> is expensive. Um, let's see. I was, uh, let's see what kind of comments we have. I'm going to turn this off. So it's not the, uh, the echo again. Let's see. Uh, C money says, congrats on your new job. Oh, thanks. Uh, Tony said, what's your pick for play, which we answered. So it's nice to feel like we're in tune with uh, what the peeps <laughs> want. Uh, Scott Spitz, Scott Spitz, who has put this hype? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. But, oh, maybe uh, on Hush Hush that I was talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no hype for me. Not for me. I don't know. I mean, the betters the have betting hype. betting public, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's chalk hype. I guess hype. that's what it is. Um, and Winston Cup should be some good pace to close into for the favorite. So he actually okay. thinks hush hush might be, unless he's thinking of the five as the favorite. Maybe. If it, there were a, uh, a head to head wager on who will be in front after a quarter mile, I'd take the three over the five. If it was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I would say they're in the gate though. So, uh, which we didn't have that up anyway. So all good. Five. Good money. Even Who do you money. think is going to go off as the favorite when the gates open the three or the five? The five. The du the double yeah. will pays, I think. Yeah. I, I always yeah. will lean toward that. Well, if you had asked me if the five would be favorite over the three in here yesterday, I would have just said no. Today, interesting. You got your 10 to 1. There it is. Oh, oh 18 to 1 on good looker. Let's go. I better hurry. Hurry up. No, there's no way I'm well, Maybe. Yeah, go, go, go. We're still on the four. 21 to 1 on the eight. That's insane. See, this is Let's what I see, the, the, I told you it's tough when you're doing this. Let's see. I got it. Me go, too. Go, go, go. <laughs> so who can Who'd you play the eight? eight? Yep. Mm -hmm. I just threw a little, a little outside horses for the eight. To outside horses for the HRN. See, three to five. Ooh. That must be you, Mark Bet. <laughs> I did play a little box try with the uh, six, seven, eight uh, for the pick four. I just singled the six, got the six, seven, and eight in my stable dual stable. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, they're in, they're in the gate, and we are in a slight off. delay. So hopefully, those watching uh, the stream know that they can uh, see this elsewhere. I'm sure they're aware that they can see this in other places. <laughs> did you expect the two to be in front here? Did not. Uh, I will say, though, looking at uh, he ended up being on the rail with the scratch of the one. Yeah. Oh, seven's uh, going now. Good. Smart decisions. Go, go, go. Yeah, you don't want to just be kind of sitting there. Uh, I, I would have lost the head-to-head -head with the five. Um, hush, hush. It needs and, to uh, get it going here. I don't think we're going to hear from Hush, Hush. The first terrible pun. At least you waited until the second I race. waited. I, <laughs> Real Quiet is my favorite horse, so I've been uh, – you and I are, are duking sure? it out for the win bet here. Let's see. If they can hold uh, on, floating looker. a little wide. Let's go, go, go. I'm doing some bumping. Maybe we'll have another inquiry. Here comes the five. I, 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 would, I would say that uh, unless uh, the, the seven uh, has a jet pack – Rocket fuel. Well, uh, would, there's the four. Would this uh, be one of those they knew situations? Yeah, everybody but you and I. <laughs> there's a six. Okay, it, I got second. You got second. I got uh, second. Win bets do not cash, however. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we we got the right price, and they yeah, were absolutely. they were on the lead as we expected. Well, as uh, uh, Jessica Paquette said, you know, the debut was just too bad to be true. She was right. 
one, it, it's one of those two, it, like, and I mentioned the 84 to one, but that almost gives you the reason to excuse it because nobody bet that horse. Right. Whereas if the horse were, I mean, heck, even 10 to one, let alone three to one or yeah. took money, you would say, well, they would happen. Absolutely. Uh, so, and Lasix. Lasix, uh, drop in class, in for the tag for the first time. What was the Shorts final up, price? Speed and fade. What was it? Three I don't five? know. If I come off this, we'll lose the, the screen. Oh, no. But we'll, you can we'll look. We'll see it. We'll see it. I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, final price. Two to five. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's... I know they, they, knew. they know gets thrown around a lot, but that's a they knew. Yeah. That's, that's that for sure. See that four coming in? Third? 99 to one. 99 to one. Someone had you to play be that nice trifecta. Let us know. I didn't like that horse. Yeah, if, uh, eighty-two thousand in the pick four pool. Uh, yeah, I'm sure plenty of people use the five. Win an exacta pool, almost exactly the same. Okay. Show and double pool, almost the same. That means nothing, but yeah. fascinates me. Now, after this race, would you say that speed is not doing too well? I would. I mean, that's a fact. The, <laughs> The question is, okay, speed's not doing too well. So the question is, can I, is that actionable? Like, do I actually yeah. think that's the situation? Or, I mean, I mean, this horse was never losing no matter where right. he was. Oh, no, just so, down the lane. Right. So th that to me, uh, you know, I guess you could say that neither the eight nor the seven being able to finish ahead of the four. That could be your your yeah, your mean, hat. That could be what you hang the hat on. Of speeds bad. Did you see Hush Hush not doing that well at all? Would you have predicted that? Second nah, I, I would have thought would have showed a little bit of run. But yeah. I mean, again, maybe you know that situation where it was so bad makes it easier to draw a line through it. Than, right. Well, I mean, only the second start, but still, like like I said, like stepping up in class. Not really, you know, the, the horse that beat um, Hush Hush didn't come back to really do much, CB Thunder. So maybe he didn't give you the winner this race, but I did give you a horse not to use. <laughs> That's true. No, and, uh, you know, unfortunately this horse being two to five killed my pick fours because just yeah, not a horse I wanted to use at that price. So uh, we're 0 for two. Well, I'm 0 for two. Did you not use the five either? No, not yeah. at all. Well, no, I made a very small ticket and I singled the six. There's a pick three coming up. You don't say. <laughs> pick <laughs> the three land and race of opportunity. Three, this which, is why we love horse racing. That's right. Uh, eight, the page. eight more opportunity. Turn it <laughs> on to the next, uh, which I am extremely uh, excited to uh, get into this race. This is where we disagree the most. After today. I use the bathroom, but. I'm very curious to get your thoughts on just pedigree in general because uh, I know some handicappers. Emily Gullickson, I'll mention again, who is like, why would you ever use pedigree to help you handicap a race? <laughs> I'm a big fan of it. I think it absolutely is, you know, just another data point that can help you distill what a horse's true chances of winning are. And um, my buddy Mike has the eight picked on top. You pick for second. Mm -hmm. And I will be shocked if that horse wins. I will be shocked uh, if this right, horse wins. So. All right, fine. I'll just talk about it by myself. You, you, you talk behind <laughs> my back. Mark, can I tag you in? Race three. I'll be joined by someone else, apparently. Yes, and I'll, I'll just leave the feet up so people will at least be able to uh, see that. Bye. <laughs> All right. So long. Welcome. Tag me in. Welcome. Thank you. How many winners do you guys pick so far? Zero. <laughs> no, this is chalk. I hit the board. I Definitely the chalk that uh, you need to uh, try to beat here, right? Yeah. Did you place a big bet on the five? Is that why all the odds changed last minute? No. Is that you that's just by a yourself? Small backup on the five. That was, a, that was, about, that was it. about it. Just to get the pick four going. And I saw Ed was talking about the turf race. The two, I like that horse as well. Kind of maybe speed on the inside. Yeah. And, uh, not a lot of speed in that turf race, so we'll see. Well, while you're making a guest appearance, who do you like for the next race? Let's see. All right, you, so I'm on Ed's notes? computer. So, yeah, yeah actually, here's, the, here's, here's my entries. So, I believe – oh, I liked the 1A, Texas Thunder. I did, too. Yeah. 
Um, this horse is only making her second start. I think that, you know, she ran good to speed and fade and also ran really greenly in the stakes race. First time out, it was a listed stakes, but still, I think she's got all the room to improve. And um, Ed is big on the three and here, expect the boss, who is probably going to end up going favorite over the one and one A, although everybody loves an entry. Um, I left this horse out of my top three. What do you think about expect the boss? Yeah, I, to me, it was kind of the second choice. So uh, I'm trying to see what the will pays are, are but, uh, you know, see where the odds shake out. But uh, I was hoping the three would go favored so that these odds would be flipped. And obviously, we had a long way to go with 19 minutes. Um, but, yeah, I thought uh, the one, particularly the 1A, might pr pr provide some value. And, uh, you know, I just kind of went 1-3 in the pick four. But uh, I think if I come back with a pick three here, I'm just going to go with the one. Really? Yeah, okay. just, just, Bold. yeah, just kind of. I think the one A, like I said, it started in a stakes race that was given time off, and we've already seen on the shipper report horses coming from Lone Star do well. So it, you know, I think especially like this, uh, a two year old gets one start in a race, um, threw it in its stakes race, which is kind of unusual. Get some experience coming back off a layoff. It seems like it's sort of well meant to, certainly for this meet, if not for today. So I thought. Uh, Especially if you can get a little bit of a price. I know Ed's big on shopping the right price. Right. Um, so I think the one could make sense. And if, you know, if Asperson's ready with the three, then so be it. Yeah, I just didn't love that the three had a lot of chances where she would get out to the front and then get nipped by another horse or, you know, something would happen and just not really seal the deal. Um, I'm kind of interested in the two. I'm a sky traveler. Um, especially if I get something anywhere near 11 to one, that would be awesome from a three to one morning line. Um, this horse is also coming from Remington Park, as in our shipper report that we mentioned, that that's a mm -hmm. good angle to play. Uh, third, five and a half furlongs last out. Um, I like this horse a lot. Just sat off, might sit off the pace, um, which if speed isn't doing well in general, other than our first two races, which it's you know hard to come to a conclusion about yet, mm -hmm. uh, might just sit a, like a good stocking trip and be there at the end. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, and And then past that, it's sort of, you know, it's a top heavy race. I mean, I mean, if you just look at the odds other than, you know, the first three, uh, everything else is pretty long in here. So you kind of need to start thinking about hooking stuff up in doubles or pick threes or, um, to get any value here at all. But, uh, it's interesting. It's great. I love playing opening night of a track, you know, kind of see how things are playing. Right. Like what are the trends going to be? Everyone's kind of yeah. figuring it out. So you're all on an even playing field. To start. Yeah. And the jockeys are figuring out too, right. right and the connections. Absolutely. So, um, you know, obviously the four horse field in the first race, you can't really get much of yeah, anything from that. Sure. Uh, um, you know, here the five was much the best. So, you know, you can't, get a ton from it, but he did come off the pace and, mm -hmm. and uh, spurted away there watching the replay yeah. right now. Yeah. And would they go 48 and yeah, that was uh, legitimate. Yeah. 48 and three. Very um, legitimate. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're not exactly flying. So, you know, it just depends how that track's playing. And I think the turf course will be interesting. So um, I think you guys might've talked about it. Yeah, absolutely. I might've missed it, but my the, I'm not sure of the full understanding, but the turf course, um, because it's a, it is winter in Sam Houston, even though it's further south in mm -hmm. Houston. So they plant a different type of uh, grass for the winter. And uh, I think with all the heat, um, yeah, we had a story at Horse Racing Nation that Ron talked to uh, Nick Tamro, the new announcer. He was explaining uh, with all the heat in December, that grass hasn't really taken. And so that's why they're running one turf race oh, okay. uh, a day only this first week. Good or, to know. Or, yeah, maybe you know, we'll see how long that goes. So that makes sense. a little bit of a bummer that there's not more turf racing, but the handicapping point is it probably pays to watch and see how the turf race plays tonight. Um, For a clue about the rest of the weekend and then exactly, going forward. Yeah, exactly. definitely. So, and uh, all right. So they're both, they're both pretty close to even money right now. So makes sense. Um, yeah. Hard to see. We'll, you know, mm -hmm. It's just not a lot else to bet in this race, so right. they may not go up too much. Yeah, I'd liked a little bit of the first time starter in the eight. Um, I did put this horse second. Um, six recorded works, might have some early speed, is a first foal, so there's not much to go off of pedigree wise. Um, but Dam did win one time on the dirt. Um, seems bred to just dirt sprint, which this is at five and a half furlongs. I don't have all the confidence in the world, but she could get a piece. Yeah, interesting. I know so there's a couple. The Braids, Braidster is a new sire, I guess, in Texas. So yeah. interesting to see uh, how they play. 
Are, yeah. are you ready to come back in? I'm ready. Yeah, All right, I'm next ready. time I come in, I got to bring my laptop. Well, and I was going to say, uh, do you want to stay for a second so I can leave? Uh, <laughs> sure, but I'm going to get my laptop then so I can actually okay, okay. talk more intelligently about uh, everything. Should we just have the dog? We're go see <laughs> Um, someone asked me if we were reading the chat, so I don't know while you're here if you want to pull that back. Oh. If anybody had anything to say. Yeah. Well, I have something to say about Braidster. Say it. Let us know. He's uh, 0 for 28 with his debut runners. Well, not good. <laughs> and to me, I'm a bit like on the extremes guy. So, you know, whether it's 8%, 15%, whatever, that's like one win could go either way, mm -hmm. two wins. But 0 for 28. That's start a something to keep an eye on. Oh, there's the dog. Laura, come here. You want to be Let's see. Uh, Someone hit for 24,000. Who is that? Oh, uh, Somo, Somo Bombs. Four, the, uh, the racing dude. So that's a, a good hit for him. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Dennis Trusty is on here. Uh, Dennis, very uh, sorry that you lost uh, your cheesecake. Uh, I hope that uh, there are future desserts uh, for you. But uh, I know that uh, the, the cheesecake was important to you. But uh, hopefully you'll... You'll figure that out. Uh, Case G, uh, I own the mare of one horse. Um, not really sure what she's trying to say. So, um, Disco Partner wants to know if you have a super high five play here. Super high five play here. Not this race. I'm going to let you come up with one while I tap <laughs> out for a second. Sarah is, uh, we'll be back. Here's Mark. All right, I'm back. Um, and Mark, uh, you won't be able to see as Timeform US on his screen. And I mentioned that because now we fit all three of the main past performance providers. Yeah, and absolutely. That's, we're all about uh, sharing information and learning from each other here. Exactly. And uh, yeah, what I liked about the 1A here, Texas Thunder, was just the, just the big pace number. Um, you know, came out of the gate strong in a five for a long stakes race. And uh, didn't really see a lot of pace here. Um, I mean, I guess they, I guess it could deal dual with three a little bit, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then we were talking about you. You talked about the two in the turf race, and I, I agreed that uh, might be. A, I mean, a good play a ten to one morning line, especially not a lot of pace in that race. If we all agree, that makes well, me nervous, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I looked at it. There oh, were, the six was everyone's top pick last yeah. race and was four to, but I mean, there's we didn't know. a few horses that you could kind of sink your teeth into on the turf race. So, um, you know, I kind of uh, two six as A's and one four as B's, even the five can run. So, you know, I don't know that it's going to come down too much. It's a, it's a pretty balanced field as opposed to this, like we talked about, this third race here is really top heavy. We uh, kind of threw in. Uh, did you look at race four at all? Because that seemed to be the universal uh, queen of the lane uh, is is the top choice, which uh, I do agree with. Um, not saying the horse is invincible, but right. I felt pretty comfortable with that one as maybe one of the more likely winners. And I did not look at this before uh, we came on, but I mentioned you are using time form and Again, based just on the first two races, so extremely limited sample size. But where the eight is plotted on the pace projector seems to be where the winners have come from in the first two races. Just kind of stalking on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the fourth, yeah, I, I was kind of four eight there. I was going to give a, a little bit of a shot to Math Mystery. And, uh, you know, coming off the uh, eight length Maiden Clamor win at uh, Remington Park, ridden out. Um, you know, probably more as um, a second A horse or a B horse to use in a, you know, like a pick three or pick four sequence. Um, yeah, because Queen of the Lane, I mean, looks the, the numbers strong uh, off the fairgrounds dirt races, but, you know, those were some off the turf races and smaller fields and two turns. And so, I, like you said, I don't know that she's quite invincible. So the four is where I would go. And I stepped away. What did you actually come up with in this race? Sorry. Uh, so we were kind of on the uh, the one A, and uh, Sarah said you were on the three, and I think she was uh, looking at the one A and the two. So, um, I mean, it's what just, about the eight? 
I, yeah, I don't think the eight's really good as a firster. And uh, like I said, the Braidster sire firster. Right. Yeah, really that's uh... inspiring. Um, you know, it's interesting. We were talking about this the other day, uh, how to look at, you know, uh, stats on sires and first timers and when to use them and when, when not. And I thought you put it well, which is just kind of look for the extremes, you know, not to worry too much about this horse. This sire is 8% or 11% with first, but when, when something's 4% or under or 15% or higher, that's, I think when you have to pay attention. Yeah. And we've uh, had various ideas and looking at first time starter races and how to come up with reports to help people. And one of the people we work with is, you know, come well. They win X percent, and that's uh, what was it, eleven percent? Yeah, and that like is very constant. Like, however you want to, well, what about turf? What about this? What about that? And it's always right around that eleven percent. So, you know, to me, when you're within a few percentage points either way, like, okay, what does that really mean? That's what the the yeah. whole wins at. But then when you get down to less than five or twenty or more, I mean, think about it. Twenty or more is one out of five approaching one out of four and when you're dealing with eight nine horse fields like that's pretty significant in my mind yeah, definitely yeah and another good rule of thumb on first timers and uh you're just looking at the overall data is they don't win that often they don't win as often as they should right so when we look at the our uh, quote-unquote shipper report for sam houston we do have a line for first timers and we also have a line for horses running back at the meet but for the first timers you know seven percent winners and it's a it's a negative thirteen percent impact. So essentially, you know, first timers are kind of like you know, it's for horse players, it's just a big pain in the butt, right? It's <laughs> like how do you how do you deal with first timers? Uh, how do you handicap them? And uh, and they're a pain. Do you use them? Do you not use them? But it is a good rule of thumb that you know, winning seven percent at a meet like this, uh, they're not going to win that often. You've got to be aware of them and. Maybe it's more about picking the spots and when you think they're going to be alive, like you said, looking at some of the other things. And, and it is something that we're working on a lot is how do we, uh, how, what other data points can we pull in to kind of get a better clue um, and maybe working on some first timer products to help people in that uh, and kind of solve that pain point, right? Well, I would be confident that uh, the eight would not show well on any kind of product that I had a say in making. All right. Fair enough. Uh, 12 to 1, though. So I'm not, uh, th that limb is not uh, is not flimsy by any means. Uh, the, the three taking all sorts of money. So far, we've had the longest shot on the board win and a incredible two to five favorite. And I think, well, he ran incredibly too, Bershi. Uh, but I did not expect a horse to be two to five in that race uh, until basically saw the double will pays. And then yeah. it was like, okay. Someone's in on it, so we'll we'll see what happens here. But uh, did any of you mention the four? We did not mention the four, not not the two of us. Okay, well, so uh, fancy the four here is a price. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the four because I thought, uh, and I'm just scrolling here. The uh, Sea of Life. Okay. Uh, And actually, Mike Mike C had on his list as well. Uh, what I liked was uh, Remington Park uh, two back was a two turn race on the turf. Uh, then was a dirt sprint and uh, was beaten nine and a quarter lengths. But the early pace ratings and Burstnet called it a fast pace. Uh, actually, despite not being in the thick of the race itself, the early pace ratings were an improvement over last time and the best numbers of this one's career. Now second off the layoff, uh, a trainer I'm not too familiar with, but figured that would help the price. Uh, gets to cut back a little bit to five and a half and uh, the sire's average wind distance is five furlongs. So I have to think the shorter, the better for this one. Uh, the dam, uh, same kind of situation with her pedigree. So I did think Sea of Life was somewhat interesting as a, uh, if she's able to improve second off the layoff and that cutback in distance, I, I thought we'd get the right price. And I think, what are we, 25 to 1? I'm yeah. in. To win? I would bet this horse to win at 20 for 1. All right. Yeah. And it's and that, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhat of an example, you know, not liking the, the 2 to 5. It yeah. was taking a bunch of money. But 
you know, if you're, you're sitting there and your whole thing is how do I extract value out of a 12% takeout pool and a pick four, I could absolutely envision, well, okay, if it, if it comes five, four, I want to be live. Right. Um, so, right. You know, I didn't, I didn't do that, but you know, to me, that's kind of where you can still right. use a two to five with a right. horse. That's going to be a clear separator no matter what. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, I hear where you're going. I think it's just the problem. I guess, I guess it's not that far behind the last race is improved. And, and so that's, that's a definite positive. Um, you know, you're kind of going from I don't know, a trainer I'm not familiar with to a trainer I'm not you know, <laughs> familiar with. Well, and and I bring up the pace, um, you know, this Kerry Fodius is kind of who came up with these theories. I bring that up not to say, oh, it was a little faster early last time, could yeah. be on the lead here. I don't see that happening, but maybe another step forward. Um, you know, it, it needs to be a big step, but there was reasons to say, OK, maybe it's going in the right direction, cutting back. Yeah. Second off the layoff, et cetera. And uh, again, a big price. Yeah. So. I, you know, I'm firmly on the 1A here. My thought on the 1A, and, and this is another good angle, I think, is so this horse was a two year old filly in June, you know, which is pretty early to have a, a two year old start. And usually, you know, they're even as a two year old, they're greatly improving. Now it's coming back as an early three year old. And you just got to think about how much those horses have improved in that time. So whatever number that you put on that first start, like uh, time form gives it a 56, you might have to project, you know, a good 10 or 15 points off of that just because the horses are growing over six months time. And uh, the other thing I liked about the 1A was uh, if you looked at its works going into its debut, the best work was kind of a 37 from the gate, you know, really slow stuff, 51, 49 and three. And now it's breezing, you know, 48 and one, uh, a 50 from the gate, um, a few one ones It looks like it's trained more seriously up to this race where it wasn't last time. And so from those two projections, if you project this horse further, I think sometimes, um, you know, people have, it's tough for handicappers. How do you project horses off a layup? And this is a case where I would project this horse to go forward, where looking at the numbers today on paper, its numbers are in the same range as the two uh, and the three to some degree, but the guess the question is what, you know, what does it land? Does it go forward? Does it go back? Right. Um, I think with the three, we've kind of already seen what it can do. Although you can actually, you can make the same argument for the three because the three is off the same layoff of 180 days. So the three may jump forward as well. Well, uh, they're certainly playing the inside numbers. Uh, I'm not sure what posts they're all in because of the entry, but uh, one, two, three, the overwhelming favorites here, eight, eight nine to one, uh, actually taking some money down from double digits is the uh, first or by Brader and Disco Partner is shocked. You're not chasing that $1,100 super high five pool. Oh yeah. There you go. Go uh, $1,100. Yeah. Here's uh super high five straight. Go. Uh, let's go one, three, four, two. And then at that point you can almost go all. You can almost go off. Was it just three is it a 50 cent wheel or? Yeah. I think, oh, the five's out. Oh, there you go. He wasn't really. Not a, not too much of a go. factor. It does, it does move whoever was to his outside in one, I guess, but. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tap out. Let Sarah jump back in. All right. Good luck. Let you guys go I'm glad we didn't away. hear any screeching tires while we were talking. No, you get an accident out there. You never know. There's a lot of Sarah snow. thrown in reverse. Uh, yes. Kentucky uh, driver it, in the snow. Right? It'll be a slow drive home. Uh, expect lavender. Like the name. Didn't like its chances. Yeah, now no has no chance. Now has zero chance. No expectations for expect lavender. And nope. Just, I brought you uh, a Jolly Rancher. I was eyeing those. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to go with the, uh, what is this, watermelon? Yeah. That's the one I didn't want, so that works out. Perfect. Kind of like uh, no one likes the yellow Maybe. starburst. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'll be a little starburst. I don't care. No. Do you think they all taste the same? Yes. <laughs> That's why. I'm going to leave now. They take, they take, <laughs> there's not enough of a difference that I have a preference. Do you think that Coke and Pepsi taste the same? No. Okay. Absolutely not. I guess I'll stay. Which is why it's so shady that you just sell people Pepsi when they ask for a Coke. I don't do it anymore, do I? <laughs> True. <laughs> Not really in the soda selling now business anymore. Now you're here selling people on Braidster debut runners. Yeah. 
not my top pick. Okay. Well, I, it tend to <laughs> it tend to one if there's reasons other people like them. One of those like, am I going to talk you off a ten to one? Horse? There's a first turn in here. I like this one over the nine, whose sire did nothing at all on the track. Did you look at that pedigree at all? The nine. Yeah, you said you the oldest. About it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? Fifty to one. These are like, you know, famous last words. Kind of feel like the horse should be. <laughs> Even higher than that, but I would say so. Let's see. Uh, no. Let's see if we have any questions from uh, the YouTube contingent. Yep. See what's going on. Uh, someone wish Disco Partner a Happy New Year. I'll do the same. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, if we don't hit a winner here, might not be feeding him for a week. Well, hopefully everyone gets fed no matter what, unless they're talking about me. Which I fed you. You got candy. I got candy, You're so good. I'm good to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, well, Dennis Trusty, how important is it to you have two horses here getting both the one and one A versus the three? Everybody loves an entry, but I the, think they're a logical entry. The, I think that's what matters. Most. It's it's like with anything in my mind. If if you think. Each horse, to make it simple, has a 10% chance of winning, then fair odds getting them both is four to one. Right. But sometimes because of the entry, they get bet even harder than that, and uh, that's a bad bet. I yeah. need to grab a power cord. I'll let you narrate the race. Oh, good luck. I'm calling a race. Wow. <laughs> I will not be doing that. <laughs> uh, they're loading into the gate. The man that's doing the starting is walking around looking at things in his hat. The nine's coming up right now. I hope everybody at home is watching this for themselves and not just listening to me yell about it. All right, they're all in. Hasn't even started yet? No, take your time. Still haven't started. Still waiting. You're going to be back before they even break. They're off. Eight's out the back early. One A is rushing up to the front with the most early speed. You got the two on the inside going up. One A's crossed over and is on the rail. One, two, three. Huh? Oh, yeah. If they finish like that, that's my nice cold try. So let's go. And what was Mark Super I5? One, three, four, two all? Mm, sounds about right. One, two, three. Let's go. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Outside stalking trip looks to be the winner again right now. Yeah. Who's not really uh, throwing down much here? Hey, that's the that's the eight. eight. Breakster <laughs> gonna make a fool out of me here. There we go. Is it gonna be the one? Need the three to wipe them out again. Wow. And we've seen history in the uh, history making in here. The making. The first ever debut winner by, by number Brewster. eight. So let's wow, see, uh, wow. my, uh, the horse I thought had the least chance should have been put up in race one. Yep. This horse, I said I would be shocked. Yep. And I won. did have this one as my, my second pick. You did. I did. And, uh, I didn't bet this horse to win, Mike but I C, did. <laughs> Mike C picked on top. So okay. he's hopefully doing, uh, much better than I am because, uh, I'm over basically. I did think that the three was uh, not going to hit the board, so I was wrong about that. But hey, yeah. whatever. Wins a win. I had the eight somewhere in there in the top three, and there we go. And uh, another similar trip. I mean, I mentioned outside oh, stalking, outside. which at, at the time I thought that was going to be the three who uh, just, <clears throat> I don't want to say didn't go on with it. There was several links back to uh, the third place finisher, but the three ran, ran well. Um, I just didn't think saw this one coming, and the one A ran really well as well. Well, the uh, uh, hit me. <laughs> not, 
No, I don't watch enough Gallup outs. I know uh, Marcus Hirsch is a big fan of them, but uh, I mean, it did look like, I mean, the eight still was, was opening up. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's a nice debut. A nice debut. And anytime you get a uh, progeny of Braidster winning on debut. It's history making. <laughs> you know you got something. Seen it here first with uh, Ed and I. Wow. This is a moment for the record books. A moment for the books. How are we uh, going to celebrate? Another Jolly Rancher? <laughs> nah, one's Should my limit. I'm driving. <laughs> In the snow, you yeah. got to be aware. Right, you want to be. Uh, well, the high five ended up with uh, almost 3,000. So I wonder if there's a carryover. So that's why Disco Partner Disco Partner wanted uh, people in. Well, we, uh, we picked up. Someone must have said Ed DeRosa has said two horses can't win, and they've well, one should have been put up. Somebody's the, watching. The other just ran off because uh, people want to come in for the embarrassment. Uh, we picked up a few viewers, so welcome. Right. I am trying to pop into the comments, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, chime in with those. Yeah, let us know if you want us to talk about anything uh, particular, too. And give me a winner, I think, more importantly. I mean, I tried. You thought nothing of this horse. Well, you didn't. I didn't pick, you didn't pick on top. top. My, Mike C, though, he gets the shout out because yeah. that is a 13 to 1 top pick winner. And uh, looking yeah, at his pick. She's doubting. She's right there. She's second. Look at it. You see that? Yeah. Well, I have your picks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, he had the winner of race one as well. So he's had uh, 9 to 2 and 13 to 1. Wow. Seems like that's going to be our next guest because uh, we're sticking up the joint here. <laughs> he's sharp. <laughs> Uh, well, it's his home track, so I feel like. I mean, fair. This is show, my first time playing. He's showing out. Yeah. I'll give myself a little bit of credit. It's not mine. So I don't I, have any excuses. For I, I have no excuse. <laughs> yeah. What? Look, I I got psyched out, I guess, by uh, you know the the uh, the debut numbers for the sire the and snow thirteen to one. Uh, some other people got psyched out as well, but yeah, uh, if you were on board, you um, spiced up your pick four because uh, it started with a two to five. Uh, but that horse definitely figures to not have taken that kind of money should and well. uh, should should be off and running uh, halfway home, two to go, pick three starts in race four, pick six in race five, uh, and then uh, race six is when we'll uh, close things out and uh, have our, our pick five plays. Um, was that five and a half furlongs? I think so. And what's race yes. four? Now, as we turn the page, we're looking at seven furlongs. Seven. Perfect. Because I did want to show um, we have some post position stats. Uh, we have a post bias report, which is available daily at Horse Racing Nation. But uh, as part of looking at the meet, previewing Sam Houston, uh, we had uh, we wanted to look at basically how the track had been playing over the last three meets. Uh, so more of a sample size. And one thing we noticed is that the middle post positions, as you can see with the, the red lines drawn there, uh, just depending on the length of the race, uh, very uh, positive expectations, uh, whereas the inside and outside maybe not as much. Uh, with the five and a half furlong race, uh, that may have been one of the things that helped, uh, what's that horse's name, Amazonian Queen, mm -hmm. uh, get the job done right there in that sort of mm -hmm. middle post wheelhouse after the scratch, especially to pay $29. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, back to the seven furlong races here, uh, it is more on the inside that has the positive expectation post three and four. Uh, but uh, to me, definitely something we're thinking about. Sarah, I know, uh, you know, less number inclined than I am with the handicapping, but when I bring stuff like this up, it's not, oh, I can only pick a horse and post three or four. Those are the money posts. It's more about, well, if I'm kind of on the fence on the favorite who might be in another position, that this could be something that gives me a little confidence to go against the favorite. Right. If I'm thinking about if a horse is worth singling, especially like two or three to one, not the obvious single for others, mm -hmm. and they're in a good post, you know, based on this, like that's something where you can say, okay, that's another point that isn't as obvious in the PPs. Like you wouldn't open Bursnet or form, the form and see this information. It's just something to keep in mind as you handicap. And uh, again, we do this every day for a meet to meet basis, but this numbers looks back at the last three years. Absolutely. I think this is going to end up being the race where we agree the most as a possible single multis. Um, if you're playing another pick three, if you're already still alive in the uh, previous pick four or any of the other pick threes going on. Um, and how does this horse figure number wise? Uh, 
It looks pretty and boss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looks pretty like boss. Queen, and you might and, say, it is now the seven to five favorite as well. So that makes a lot of sense. And I was uh, somewhat <laughs> nervous. Uh, you know, we've talked about uh, these dirt sprints, uh, the horses on the front end before this year anyway, uh, definitely seemed to have been at an advantage and was uh, somewhat concerned of the trip Queen of the Lane would get. But based on what we've seen now, oh, especially the last two sprints, uh, that's the trip. Yeah, and you get too. you get Lane Luzzi, who certainly knows his, his way around with these, and he was excited to ride for this barn at this meet with his new agent. So uh, a lot to like. Uh, the public likes as well. I uh, Seven to five, I'm not thrilled about. I definitely wouldn't want even money or certainly odds on. So another situation of watching the board, um, the four is six to one, who uh, was definitely my uh, alternative uh, to the eight. Uh, I do think from a just sort of trip perspective, I understand why the public's on the eight and I am too. I agree with that. And I think I have, I have the four second as well. With the way that the track is playing, do you give the two a little bit of a longer look? She has that kind of like same uh, running style, like King to close down the lane. She does stretch out from five and a half for a long. She is going up in class from a $15,000 claiming level. Um, I wrote in my notes that she might not get a much pace to chase in here, but it seems like it might not matter. This is one of those uh, I, put, I mentioned earlier and posted on Twitter looking at my 2021 wagering numbers. 90% of my handle was in multi-race wagers, and look, that's what I like. It's fun, so I gravitated toward there. That seems a little heavy, though. I think, you know, as, if you're going to play and you're going race to race, especially, and you feel like, okay, I've done this research, like, you need to take advantage of all pools um, and just – have the ability to adapt as things come up. And this would be an example of that in my mind. Famous last words, because it's bit me in two out of three <laughs> races. This is definitely a horse I don't really see as a win candidate at all, even at a big price, 24 to one. But trip-wise, figures to be in the mix of what we've seen mm -hmm. do well. Uh, the form is consistent enough that I think we can expect that. Speed wise, again, there's just too many in here. They would all have to not run their race. And that, even at 24 to 1, seems like a tall oh, order. Much. But 18 to 1 now, at that yeah. price, like, okay, yeah, I like the eight. The two makes some sense. Throw in for a try. Maybe. Right. So you, you can do something with maybe the two underneath at that price. Yeah. I think the mistake a lot of people make when looking vertically is either A, they're back excuse me, boxing a bunch of horses and including, you know, the two or three that everyone has, mm -hmm. or they're, oh, I like the eight and I'll put it on top of the one, four, seven. Well, Are you a little yeah. surprised that the one is three to one? Uh, of a 10 to one morning line? Yeah, let's, uh, these, uh, these pick threes are somewhat interesting because, oh, there we go. It's like, where's the rest of them? The three is actually uncovered. <laughs> wow. Uh, which is fascinating. And two out of three. Can't believe that. Although, if you used eight, anyone but the eight in the pick four, you're, you're, you're loving life because those are some very generous pick threes. And uh, the, the last is wide open. So even if you were narrow there, most people mm -hmm. are as well and had to make some decisions. Anyway, back to, to your point about the one. Uh, I mean, based on what I saw, I figured would be the alternative to the eight with the four. So I guess from the standpoint that it's that much shorter than the four, yes. Uh, yeah, based on the will pays, though, it, it, it'll probably narrow a little bit. I agree with you. I was a little surprised that the four is opening up at seven to one and the one is seven to two, but you're right. I think it'll change. Um, I really don't think much of Loot Scoot and Boogie, boogie uh, <laughs> <laughs> the dance or the horse, um, but I get the connections and this horse had some you know, speed, but I think this horse is one of those like very few that you can say it definitely prefers a wet track and improved tremendously on one the numbers improved on one um has an early speed but those last two performances didn't really do it for me no no <laughs> no loot scooting boogie here uh i think what number is that seven seven okay uh it's the six that had the back numbers that somewhat interests me uh, i agree with you yeah. uh five to two definitely a surprise um i'm not surprised at that price with the connections though everybody just sees steve that's true Good point. Steve, Especially yeah. early. So right. like if you're betting early, oh, Steve, like yeah, five to two enough. makes sense. Uh, based on the will pays, again, probably will drift mm -hmm. uh, beyond what the one and four are, especially the four at seven to one. But uh, 
yeah, outside stock and speed definitely uh, seems to favor the eight in here as we take a look at the wagering menu. Pick six starts next. Uh, that race five. This is our first chance to move in to race number six, which closes uh, the the pick three, and that's another race where uh, it seems like universally everyone's on the deuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah myself included. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> This is the place where I was like, yes, that chalk makes a lot of sense. Um, I was looking at the daily racing form buyer par for here. This is the only horse that hit the par and exceeded it several times over. So it seems like a very, very logical single. And um, I'd really be surprised if anybody else beat this horse if she just shows up at all. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Lady Abe, who comes from Remington, has a work on the track. So checks those boxes that Austin had told us about. Uh, and then, the, again, the connections uh, that we know like to take money um what i don't know i'm not sure what happened to back at delta but again six and a half there is two turns mm -hmm. uh so maybe that was the issue and with those starters uh you just you never you can catch a variable quality of field and uh she may have ended up being too tough for her there but yeah she seems uh probably the most likely winner on the whole day yeah uh, i would say so i think that's your easiest um lock of the day so to speak Here's the chalk here, just a uh, front end view, so not sure how much you're you're able to tell, but uh, seems so professional. Wow, everybody's about the eight. Well, why not? Exactly. Oop. You pulling up the feed? Yeah, we're back. Here we are. See if anyone has anything intelligent to say in the chat. Uh, yeah, that'll take off the feed, but okay. actually, I need to. I meant to bring it up on here. That's why I put this in. Multitaskers we are. So many screens. The more screens you have, the more powerful you are. Is that true? One well, of my kids uh, should should be uh, <laughs> world leaders. Then. That's what you should believe for them, isn't it? Well, that's true, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what kind of questions we're getting here. Genius questions, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, give us a sneak peek of the Turfway's Pick 5 carryover. Sneak peek. Well, not necessarily your thoughts. Just everything. mention that there's a carryover oh, and that you're going to write about it. All right. I have an article coming out tomorrow or maybe later tonight. We'll see what kind of uh, time we have going on or how much snow is out there to keep <laughs> me uh, locked in here. Um, but we do have a very exciting early pick five carryover available at Turfway. Um, I think that starts around 6 p.m., 6.15 post time. Um, I'll double check on that. But it's over $29,000 available for their pick five carryover. I'm going to have a little article about it. It seems like a very hittable sequence from what I've looked at so far. There's nothing that uh, really stands out to me yet as being totally impossible. Mm. So if you hit the pick five today and the pick five tomorrow at Turfway, that'd be two in a row. I'm not hitting any pick fives today. <laughs> Um, not playing? No, I will. Oh, just not not, not as, confident. as confident. All right, that's fair. Uh, on the wrong lead, Andrew, who you are doing a podcast with next week, loves the seven here. Really? Yep. And he will not be hearing any of our disparaging remarks. Okay. Now, does that mean he's muting us, or it seems like, like warning we'll us not to, to disparage about on this podcast <laughs> going forward? Because I don't like this horse at all. Uh. Well, that would, so like a week later, hey, remember that fourth race at <laughs> Sam Houston last week? I mean, it depends on how right I am or not here. You or know, him, either, yeah. either Someone will get the chance to bring it up. Uh, yeah, either I'm totally wrong and we're never mentioning it, or he's totally wrong and that's all we're going to talk about, because that's how that goes. Wait, whose podcast are you doing next week? Apparently a lot of them. <laughs> I'm the wrong lead is Josh, which you just corrected. Uh I thought you were doing another. Who's got the action? Are that's it. Yes. That's the that's confusion. The and Ron's, right? And Ron's. Josh, I hope you understand why there was that confusion. Yeah, she is doing yeah, Andrew's yeah, podcast, podcast, which I confused with his handle. You should do Josh's podcast. Well, he, they do a video stream. They've done yeah. some stable duel stuff, too. Right. Uh, and he likes whiskey. And now I probably have to send him a bottle of Woodenville so. uh, for getting his first name wrong. But that it was the confusion. Like you need to be on that podcast next week. So you are not okay. doing Josh's, who likes yeah. the seven. Okay. And so clearly we'll he did not mute time. the feed because he heard me <laughs> call him by the wrong name. Who's got wow. the action is the podcast wow. you're doing. And I'm going to stop digging a hole here. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> but I hope you understand why there was a confusion. 
Uh, I still don't like your horse, but I'm really sorry. <laughs> Mike C., uh, I'm going to change the subject to someone who just picked a $29 winner. Yes, uh, let's talk about them. Early first-timer winner this year, uh, and he said he's not going to be scared to pick others. He ain't scared. I mean, don't be scared. Don't be scared. We only have one nice Jolly Rancher Mike. here left. That's yours. One's my limit. Oh, and it's blue. Now, Jolly Rancher know. does have different flavors. I thought you said they didn't. No, Starburst. Oh, Starburst. Okay, yeah. right. Yep, absolutely. I don't want this one either. I can't give it to my dog. All She's right. Uh, I, I'm probably going to have to not one. open Discord for the rest of the night because I'm sure I'm getting roasted in there for uh, calling Josh Andrew. I'll roast you enough. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> you'll, you'll do the, uh, the marshmallow. I'll do the owners. Absolutely. Uh, back to Sam Houston. Nine mm -hmm. minutes left. And um, looking looking at the will pays. Yeah. The, so the eight, clearly the favorite. I don't get the three at Pretty all. Pretty even. 11 to 1 down from a 30 to 1 morning line and being less of a price. Than the well, and uncovered in the pick three, I, I yeah. would assume that that horse will take none uh, none of the late money. This horse is just, I have it written, out of depth. Out of, wow. That's it. Deep so water. So now if she wins, I can really be roasted. That, uh, I mean, it's one of those, uh, like, 12 to 1. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, not for me. Get roasted. Take, take the edge off me calling Josh Andrew. I haven't called anyone by the wrong name yet, that's so true. that's good. That I'm is, sure I'll call uh, a horse the wrong name at some point, though. Uh, well, my worst uh, moment ever is uh, a professional, as I asked Vicky Oliver about a horse that Vicky Foley trains, and that was very wow. embarrassing. You yeah. also spelled um, the trainer that we had on, well, you had on the talk space. Well, now. that was a typo. Uh, that was nah, it, that was an yeah. errant R. I, I never mm -hmm. thought his his last name had an R in it. So he seemed to like the flair. The flair. That's what he said. He was like, "Oh, I like the added R." Oh, like the flair. At, the flair. What was that restaurant the called? What? The restaurant in Office Space that Jennifer Aniston works at. I have no idea. Well, we'll somebody, someone in the chat somebody. will know. With the history. It was a it was a riff on TGI Fridays, and she oh, wore a bunch of pins. Okay. And I like math mystery warming up here. I feel like most of math in my life is a mystery, so that makes sense. Not for you though. You're a math major, correct? Uh, well, was. Well, <laughs> you got an assignment I, I, I got. I, oh, thankfully not. Um, um, well, how do they look on the track? Tchotchkes. Yeah, I mean, Math Mystery looks good. All of all of Steve's horses always look good, so it's hard to judge. Yeah, them. They do. Yes, the braids are always a nice touch. I wonder if he's there for opening day. I wonder. That is his home. Is it? Well, Texas. They have Whataburger down there. Yeah, have you have you been to Texas? Oh yeah. Many times. Twice. Twice. What's good to eat? Well, three if you count. When I drove from Fairgrounds to Oaklawn, I went through Texarkana. Okay. And I, I did eat there. That. Well, okay, then maybe. Yeah, but I've uh, been to Houston and Lone Star. Uh, well, I mean, they got they got the barbecue. They got the Tex-Mex. Yeah. What's good to eat here besides uh, the soup of the day across the street? <laughs> um, well, I told you about Vietnam Kitchen. Yep, we'll have to go. So that's, that's near where you're staying. Although you'll soon be, thank you, you'll soon be in Middletown. Yes. Um, yeah. Which is... Uh, Exciting new adventure. That's definitely more suburbia. That's fine. So you get your your chain joints. But you have a restaurant at your, or Joe's apartment complex. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting times. Very um, exciting. Just like this candy. Oh, somebody wants a candy. I don't know if anyone can see her, but... Candy? Can dogs have candy? No. No. <laughs> I would never give my dog candy. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't give a dog Jolly Rancher. No, that's too much. Yeah. That she could choke on. This is chewy. All right, nine to five. Steve's drifting anyway. to seven to two for Josh, whose podcast you will Which not be on. Which never forget. <laughs> um. I'm a little interested in two at that price. Like I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't pick her as a one candidate. I'd be all in on the eight here to win. Although I wouldn't place a win wager. Um, uh, nine uh, to five. Um, would you? Yeah, I probably would at nine to five. Seven or the. I mean, I would say the sevens the takeout reducer. Um, yeah. 
kind of hoping it wins for Josh, who is uh, do some good karma after I called him Andrew. But uh, I don't. <laughs> but I didn't do anything wrong yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would I would say uh, looking at the exactus too. I, I think. Would you play a, a cold eight four? No, I, I'm thinking it's eight with two with one four six in a tri key box. So need the two, need the eight, and then one four or six. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Which. I don't know. Maybe it's just better to, to key the two because that's 16 to one. Right. Um, and not worry about the eight having to be there with one, four, six. But then in that situation, you're tossing the seven completely, which. I wouldn't know, leave the seven off the board. Like uh, if it if it were two, eight, seven, I wouldn't hit. So I don't like right. that. Like that. That's I, that's how I try to think. OK, I'm making this bet. If it I try. Me too. I'm making this bet. If it comes one way and I don't have it, can I live with that? And two eight seven would seem to be one of those like, uh, how did I yeah. right? So missed opportunities. I don't see. love the way the two is moving though. Really, really. Are you looking at the front or the back, or is this you get the whole picture? Well, I'm looking at nothing now, but <laughs> <laughs> there was a kind of, the way that the horse is moving. When you see the back legs and the head come up on a specific footfall, it could be indicative that there might be a little bit of um, tension or, you know, I don't want to say favoring because that's not the right word, but just uh, less comfortable on that side of the body. So it could be indicative when the horse goes to switch leads down the lane. What about the seven? She looks fine. That's the enigma for me here is the second choice. Yeah. I just don't think she has quite the same form that she did. Um Maybe she's just better than these. Who knows? I'm going to say no, uh, and I wish I were in Josh's good graces because I would actually like to know what he likes because this one. I'm sure he'll still tell you. Just apologize <laughs> nicely. I have taken my medicine. It was, yeah, it was a mistake. Yeah. I yeah. had the had you the hand, it enough. I've had the handles mixed up, and he's cherry drank on Twitter. Is oh, how okay. I know him. So when right, that popped, that yeah, when that yeah. popped up like that. So I, I hate to make excuses when I'm in the wrong, but. That's what happened. Nine to five. I think the eight at nine to five is is worth a play. Um, Joe says hi. Joe K? Yeah. Oh, how about that? I don't know if he's watching, but hey. Oh, he's watching. I'll get back to your text after this. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't <laughs> like when uh, he's ignored. <laughs> or if my emails don't go to spam. Right. Oops. Let's see. The it's pools picked. Eh, nothing. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Show it. Uh, yeah, the three has no money to show on it. Fifty-eight bucks only. Yeah. Yeah, that seems more logical to me. That the three is going up. Yeah, I would say that's uh, headed to fifty to one. Uh, so pick three wise. What would you do here? Would you you be know, so bold as to I, single. I'll tell you what, and because like the obvious horse in the third leg is the two, I think I would. I would go eight with two five, neither of which is the favorite in the fifth race with the two, and just try to, to hit that a few times. You like the five in the fifth? I like the five. Really? Mm hmm. Okay. Guess that means you don't. I guess it does. You know, that trainer is 0% first time turf, 0% third to turf. Well, Brightster was 0%. First time uh, debut. We might see a lot of history making <laughs> things this evening. Who knows? Sam Houston, you never know what you're going uh, to see. Seven to five down on the eight. So mm. that makes sense. Uh, Lewis Dowsett is uh, from the UK, so he's tuning in cool. at uh, what is it, ten thirty, eleven thirty? There, they get fixed odds over there, Do and they? he is nice. on Math Mystery at eleven to two. So that is a uh, not too bad. Well, that's it. See the four? Yep. So five to one versus yeah. So he's yeah, fair. He's around there. I think the four maybe maybe settle at four to one or nine to two. So eleven yeah, to two. Sense. Not too bad. Good good maybe job. A little more fixed odds wagering here in the U.S. But you know, that's coming along. my main man ITP is reticent to accept it, and I get why because I do agree with him uh, that the people who actually take the bets are not going to want winners. 
against them. Like if yeah, you're booking exactly. bets, uh, I still think there's there's ways there's, a market for it. there's ways to do it. Um, I, I would definitely like to see more of it with our biggest events. Um, right, you know, especially future wagers where mm-hmm. it's fixed odds instead of the uh, the paramutual future wagers. So, well, it's another one of those things. You like it when it benefits you, <laughs> and you don't like it when it doesn't. And that's right. That's human nature. So, there's a market for it, though. Yeah, there absolutely is, and uh, happy to have people from mm-hmm. uh, the opposite uh, end of the ocean uh, playing along with us. Appreciate the comment, Lewis. So glad uh, we don't have snow there. Hopefully, and get a lot of rain though. Yeah. And fish and chips. Is that the extent of your knowledge? Um, because it's kind of mine. Uh, <laughs> that one. Uh, Queens, Queen of the Lane. That one Queen. comedian was uh, in their version of The Office. Ricky Gervais. That's it, right? I don't know. I don't, I, okay, everyone's going to hate me, but I don't love The Office. No, that's not yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And this is actually your first office job, right? It is. So. Yeah. This is my first like adult daytime job where I don't have to go wait tables and make drinks for people. So, do you think maybe after six months of an office environment, though, you might learn to appreciate the office? Remains to be seen. What would you wager on that? I would. I would still say unlikely. What would you give but, it like? Uh, eight to one. <laughs> yeah, I'd give it like twenty to one. More unlikely than not. Queen of the Lane now even money. Um, Fair. Loading up. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna pass. Um, yeah, th- this is this is a pass for me. Uh, I think part of that may be being shell shocked from calling people by the wrong name and giving two horses is the least likely winners. You can recover. It's gonna be okay. Well, the pick five. That's that's my scene. What do we have? Two races left to talk two ra- about. Two, two races. Right. I'll probably play the pick six though. Yeah. The Space City Six. Non jackpot. Non-jackpot. I know uh, Sam Outer Houston place. has had jackpot wagers before, but this is not going to be one of them. Uh, they're going in the gate, so I guess I'll uh, flick this off, and you can see Sarah chomping on some sour punch. What are these called? Yep, that's it. Bites. Yeah. Also, if this company ever wants to sponsor me, that would be great. <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. <laughs> The American Licorice Company. They're based. Out there. They're based in Indiana. So if you're out there, we're close by. Maybe something I'll with Indiana Grand. Oh, they're off. Oh, there's a seven going to the front. There's a one going to the front. All of our uh, horses are right up there. What do you think this first fraction is going to be? And they've been so slow. 25? 24. Oh, okay. speedy a one. A little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a little surprised the seventh's not on the lead. I get this out of the way so people aren't <laughs> thinking I have a problem more than I already do. <clears throat> Five is backing out of there. We're having to really ask the eight. I was going to say, that's uh, so some pretty strong, strong pumping. Strong urging. Four is looking good, though. Floating them wide on the turn. Four has got plenty. Go, go. Oh, tail swish. Joe K does not like the tail swish. No. I don't think it means as much. Wow. As a lot of Lane know. riding for his life here. Right, really having to ride this horse. But I think he's going to get there. Down, he's going to get it. He's, oh, 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 oh no. no, not going to get there. Wow. Well, first exciting race. Yeah. What do you mean these haven't been exciting? Well, I like to. Not that I won there. I didn't bet, but yeah. it's actually. Well, that was a pretty good one. Now, what do you make of? Do you do anything with in terms of like? Let's say you were watching this replay. Yep. Or you? I mean, now you saw it live. You we're can watching. make a note, but. What do you make of, will you say, oh, the eight was life and death and never got by, had to be asked the whole way? No. Like, is that an improve next time out? Is that a negative to you? Is, it depends. Is it is what it is? It depends because I think you need to know, like, is the rider asking because the horse just doesn't have it physically? Is the rider asking like that because the horse is playing around and doesn't want to put that effort forward? And I think there's a big difference with that. And I think this might have been a case of, 
Lane Leslie, which maybe we can hear from him at some point, to be <laughs> what uh, his thoughts are on what happened here. But I think this is more a case of the horse isn't focused and isn't giving their all, and that's why he's having to ride like that. And then if you see the improvement in the end like that, it's like the horse had that the whole time, you know? Whereas the four looked loaded going into the lane and seemed to get a little bit leg-weary late to almost get caught. So is that a case of the eight got better, the four got slower, the four was just running the same, the eight kind of just like went to catch up. So it's hard to tell like, you know, who is really the speedometer of what is happening here. But, you know, hey, this is the first time my uh, top picks finished one, two, just in the wrong order. Uh, Cornella. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up the, uh, the uh, post uh, thing again, because, you know, again, with, you know, it's not so much like, oh, I got to use every horse who's post position four or three because that's, you know, good win percentage and a positive impact. But ended up queen of the lane, even money. Certainly that was a little short for me. Not so much that I ended up playing anything else, but certainly ended up not betting the eight. But if you were kind of on the fence anyway, we know uh, Lewis over in England, like Math Mystery, some others as well. Uh, this could be where you say, man, you know, look at that, should get the right trip. And uh, it's just th this kind of information, it all adds up, hopefully adds up to you finding a winner. I couldn't pull the trigger in this case, but five to one, uh, certainly a, a decent price. And for those live in the pick four, uh, that was definitely one uh, separated from Queen of the Lane for sure and uh, was not uh, impossible uh, to get to by any means um, as uh, what does that pay about 12 bucks. So yeah, another double digit winner. I think we've had three of the four, right? No, isn't there something in those reports that we gave out with HRN about how favorites don't really do so well? Uh, there was something in there about that, right? Yes. Let me, uh, pull up? let me see if I can pull that up. I'll turn this off, which means we, we get a little bigger. Sorry about that. I know that's not, <laughs> not ideal for everybody, but, uh, definitely want to, want to pull up the, uh, that was the thing that I remember that we did. No. Ah, there it is. There it is. Let's see. Find that uh, nugget. There's the first time starters. That's already up in smoke. <laughs> There's the Remington one. That's a positive. Layoffs. Dirt sprints. I'm in 41st place in my competition. There's probably like 500 who played, right? Let's so let's see. So far, we've had we've had an 0 for 27 debut sire win. Yeah. We had a trainer who was on the avoid list who had a 2.8% win percentage. He won at mm -hmm. two to five. Um, so stats today. Just just goes to show you that uh, you know these these horses uh, not machines. Uh, I'm not seeing the favorite thing. Was that Where something was that? I came up with on and just put it on Twitter? No. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. It was a thing that we definitely talked about how, oh, yes, if you go down to Sam Houston opening week, it yeah. was in here somewhere. Oh, here it there is. There it is. It was real. It was. <laughs> uh, so opening week last year of the 14 horses who were eight to five or less, including four odds on favorites, they all lost. None of the odds on favorites were in the exacta. That That's changed happened. today because yeah. we had a two to five run off the screen. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, interestingly enough, going into that, you know, before we saw the board open and like, oh, well, crap, he's clearly alive. We thought hush, hush. I thought hush, hush would be even money in there. She didn't do anything. Maybe three to two. Uh, but that is to say, like, mm -hmm. on paper, it did appear that the horse who would take money would be the one to get beat. Half of that was true. The one who was two to five ran off the screen. But all that said, I think we've had two other even money-ish horses and both got actually all three uh, favorites other than yeah. the two to five were around even money and they all got beat. So yeah. um, definitely in my See, mind, that's the thing that we need to keep in mind going forward. Augers well for the pick five. Mm -hmm. If you're able to beat maybe some of the other favorites as we discussed and for race six, that favorite that does favorite, look be pretty formidable. And I, I guess I should pull this up though. Where was it? If you oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. 
Let's call that up. Oops. So much information. So much value. Overload. Not really, though. No. It could be worse. Yes. There we go. Ta-da! Ta-da! A little, uh, see if I can zoom in somehow. Secrets. Up. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah, still not huge, but... Eh. Mm, it's there. It's there. You get the picture of what we were talking about. Favorites, not great at Sam Houston. The two to five did win, um, but I don't need people to see all that. Man, I got lots of windows open now. How many tabs do you have? Enough for a trapper a ton, keeper? A ton of tabs. <laughs> yes, trapper keeper. Um, to answer your question, there's 338 people in this competition, and I am in 41st place. 41st. Mm -hmm. With horses left, because that's a big thing too, With right? With horses left. Um, that's without Queen of the Lane, who just ran, who finished second. So I'll get some points for that. My other horses in my little stable here are Screwball. That's my top pick coming up in race five. I have He's Pretty Lucky in race eight, the number three. And then in the finale, I have the 10 race 10, Cat Second Silver, who I think is your top pick in there as well. Yes. I like the horse a lot. <clears throat> and should be helped by the fact that the four is out. Yes. I'm going to uh, bring Ooh. back... Moved up to 25th. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to bring 30. up the... Uh, bring up this again here. Uh, the TTT, as it was called. The triple T. Yeah. Uh, this is for turf routes. And as you can see, much uh, fairer, I guess, than yeah. what we've seen in the dirt sprints, although that really hasn't come... To fruition today too with the uh, the outside uh, stalkers doing well in the dirt. Uh, we'll see what the long turf race today with this brings. Uh, I guess somewhat shades inside. Uh, if you look at uh, the inside post here, one through three, definitely a higher percentage. And uh, it is important to note that it is based on percentage. So um, you know, in, in bigger fields, uh, you would expect a lower percentage. So somewhat accounts for that but uh, all that is to say maybe slightly shade if, if you're kind of between two horses maybe the inside uh, better suited but running style wise definitely fair so I looked at that quick snapshot using this hopefully we'll have uh, more of it available uh, on Horse Racing Nation uh, as we go on and I just looked at it and said well whoever I like is who I like then I'm not really going to get be overly concerned about the trip. This is fair enough. And I think that even too with today, there only being one race on the turf. And as Mark mentioned, there's only going to be one for opening weekend each day. I don't think that this is something that you can draw a lot of opinions about just yet. You know, right. We're going to see what happens here. And it might be that the inside screwball is a logical horse that ends up winning if he does, because this is the only horse that has ever won at a mile on the turf. And you get uh, four to one currently. Which is, uh, pretty cool. Blinkers are going on. Um, have you ever seen a field where all of them are trying the turf? For the first time except for two of them and it's not a maiden probably not i mean i can't say ever or never one, but one with a half to secret certainly circle. in a maiden you uh you see it a lot in the, the secret circle the turf debut um yeah half to secret circle number three down cold which was i think the most interesting pedigree note that i found in here um damn right okay on the turf uh this one will take play for the connections but um, another one that seems kind of like out of depth to me and secret circle is a great sprinter. And so this horse might be fast. Who knows? Right. And, uh, I put up, uh, this is our pace report, which specifically looks at the races today, tries to project, uh, what you're looking at, not necessarily who's going to be on the lead, but just an overall, uh, if it's going to be a fast pace or slow and, I don't know what the average is here. I'm not that quick to add up 10 numbers, but, uh, I thought you were a math major. Over, overall, <laughs> this is an extremely slow-paced day. Um, mm -hmm. Nine main track races and the turf race, none of which are particularly fast. Fastest being a 65. I look at a lot of other tracks. If you get the pace report, you get them all for the day. And typically, there's a few in the 70, 80, 
one here or there in the 90 and plus range and you get none of that here. So I bring that up because that to me is sort of interesting in terms of, okay, well, how's the track playing? Well, none of these races have had or were expected to have any sort of honest pace. They're all slow. So when looking back and trying to discern how the track played, I think it's important to keep that in mind that going in somewhat of an aberration, I think on paper of, you know, never really having an honest pace. Absolutely. And I think too, when you're starting off a lot of the races with maybe like, you know, lower climbers or, you know, $5,000 climbers or something like that, you're not really expecting much of a pace as well from those horses. So it makes sense. All right. Uh, we got something else to share? Yeah, various, uh, various things. Uh, some plugs. Uh, so we'll get to those in a little bit as we get more through this race. Uh, but I am on the two who at 10 to one, I have to say, I'm pretty happy about that. I think that's, uh, a decent price. Mark and I were somewhat concerned uh, whether we'd get it because of uh, the, you know, usually when a bunch of people are on a horse, uh, and so we go too far back. Let's see, race five. There we go. Uh, King Jingling uh, is my top pick here. And again, uh, at first blush, only, and I didn't know the shame on me, but I didn't recall that VE Day was by English Channel. So when all I saw was the sire and the turf stats, I was like, eh, yeah. okay. But I was probably going to forgive anyway because of the price and the short sample size. But then I saw English Channel and thought, well, heck, if this horse, you know, VE Day probably hasn't gotten a bunch of opportunities anyway. This mm-hmm. horse sold at a Texas sale. Like probably the majority of them haven't been in situations where they go on to turf anyway. So right. very forgivable to me. And I uh, definitely like the fact that this one broke its maiden when stretching out to two turns mm-hmm. now back out to two turns here had run at Remington. We do have a, a positive. Win a mile. Yeah. Jockey yeah. already has a win. Absolutely. Makes some sense. It wasn't for me, but I can see why you like this horse. Um, speaking of interesting pedigrees, the four that is on screen right now is actually half the backside of the moon. Have you heard of that horse? Heard of, but what's tell That's me why it's in, but why is it interesting? <laughs> it's a horse that I knew of. Oh, okay. That's it. Um, this horse is so secret circle is still a little more interesting. Yeah, then. I would say so. Well, being in the secret circle is always more interesting, right? Um, yeah, and secret circle is obviously a much more well known horse than backside of the moon is. Um, this is another one that's doing first time turf, trainers eight percent, first time turf, four percent dirt to turf, off a of maiden win. The dam really like eighties to nineties uh, for figures on the turf. So this horse makes some sense. I'm surprised that this horse is favored, though. Yes. Uh, I think the six would be favored. Potentially a name player. Are you familiar with Dude Perfect? No. So they're this uh, group of guys that does a YouTube channel of like, I mean, it's kind of a popular genre, but they made a big name for themselves doing it. But a bunch of tricks like ping pong balls and cups from far away. I think we have some ideas for next time. Get them on the feed? No, us doing more fun things. Oh, yes. I would say that is uh, <laughs> d- definitely necessary. None more fun than picking a winner. So hopefully here at 12 to 1. that would running be, out of time. That would be very fun. But, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's a name play. They have, if not millions of subscribers, hundreds of thousands. But, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing uh, Dude Perfecta is named after Dude Perfect. And when I was wow. growing up, the Exacto was called the Perfecta. Wow. So. What a nice tidbit of history. Yep. Yeah, we have Mountaineer. some pedigree notes. We have some name notes. <laughs> Back when Mountaineer was Waterford, they called it the uh, they called it the Perfecta. Why do you like the five? Why do I like the five? I better bring this back up here. <laughs> I was going to go back to the feed, but let's uh, let's refresh my memory. Number five, Inca Empire. We do have a bullet work, one of ninety. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, which uh, we uh, and, and I'm wondering because uh, the winner of the second was two of ninety. Oh. Makes me wonder if this uh, this was Ooh. from uh, that that day, but I think I think that January horse was a different 1st. day. Of January first, four films. What did we got? December thirty first. Oh, two of ninety three. Wow. One off. Two of ninety three. Yeah, the uh, the bullet. I mean, I, I guess still based on that, you would say, well, if they've worked fast locally, they're ready to run. And so also, that, then why are we not running on the dirt though? That's a positive. Um, because this horse is run okay enough on the dirt. Yeah, both both sibs are winners. Uh, the sires just okay uh, on the turf. I kind of figured, just condition book wise, uh, they wanted two turns. Yeah. Um, 
that was kind of in my head is is a potential uh, Richard Aromnia with this trainer's 18 percent. Um, it, it just seemed like one of those didn't think would be favored, isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, Six one's fair. Definitely prefer my top pick because it's a bigger price, but uh, I was only two five in the A column. Yeah. That's interesting. I went one six four for my picks here with the so one we're com- on top. We're completely uh, completely at odds. Well, I mean that's good, right? Yeah, that's, and so is uh, they're on, they're on the four. Nick and Trey. Four. Nick's got the one. Nick's second. got the one. Oh, that's okay. that's you. Uh, Mike yeah. C is on the one. He he's had two uh, double digit winners so far. He's good, good. he's Somebody either or though because the other two he hasn't gotten. He didn't have anywhere. Okay. So. Hmm. Well, the six seems like it might be the speed on the turf since it's the only other one that's tried the turf and did show speed. Um, trainer, 17% for two off, 45 to 180 day layoff, uh, 11% dirt to turf. So did did run, you know, turf and then dirt and now is going back. So that horse interests me. The six? Yeah. Mm. Does it interest you? Uh, I mean, a little. I'm... After the two and five, I have five different horses written down, none of which are the three. <laughs> um, but, you know, at that point, it's like people always, you know, they ask, well, how do you use your grid? You can't possibly bet all these horses. And they're right. You're like, watch me. Well, I, I, <laughs> I could, uh, but, I, you know, even not. even I realize, like, okay, you can't win using every horse you even like Ooh, a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually thought they might be a little higher if yeah. I'm being on it. I mean, I wouldn't mind being live to the two for, for eight bills, yeah. but I mean, it's 50 cents. Well, maybe some people played a little higher, but you know, my B's among them are seven and eight as well as four and <laughs> six. Well, okay. If they're both in the same column, like obviously I would rather bet the seven or eight at that price and not the four or six. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. So, right. you know, if I, if I get beat by the four, a favored B, then so be it. Like, right. If I so like a favored who's not B and who's not an A, it, they're not worth a bet. That's, that's just fair. that's kind of the advice I give people who either A are earnestly asking, "Hey, how do you use this?" Mm-hmm. or even you know when they're smart, like, "Well, you can't bet every horse." Well, that's I could, like you said, but no, I don't. Just look for the prices. No, so, ball is a gelding for guy. In this, like in this case, okay, four six over bet maybe a little bit. One's five mm-hmm. to one. That's just okay. I would mm-hmm. I would say I and I don't love boxing, but in this case, two five seven eight for twelve bucks. Hopefully, two of the four finish first or second. Yeah. What starts here? Pick six. Pick six. Pick six. Are you playing? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna play. Did you make a ticket? Um. Need to do that. Did you already put one in though? No. When you were putting in all your tickets? No, that was oh. all early stuff, which oh. is was well, you got time. Was eliminated. Yes, it was. <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. Well, better. I have not, I have not made it out of uh, which I didn't bet race four, but uh, yeah. of the others, I have not made it uh, past the first leg in anything. I'm probably gonna sit out the rest of the card and just let my stable Google uh, stable ride and see what happens. Mm. Mm. Freebie. What's Freebie. first worth? Ten bucks. No, let's find out. All right, yeah, pick six starts here. Um, you know, it'd be great to to beat the four or six right off the rip, I would say. Uh, okay. You know, the the two and the next is sort of the universal single, but I just – I can't I can't beat her. Yeah. You know, if she'd have to really not show up, um, which is possible, but she'd really have to not show up at all for me to be not singling that horse if I was playing. Um, what do you like in the seventh? Uh, the seventh. I like the seven. Me too. I have the seven and the six. I kind of was interested in the nine. It does have that one figure that's like a little bit of an outlier, but the horse scratched, so that doesn't matter anymore. Um, in race eight, the only one that really interests me was the Deodora horse in the three. He's pretty lucky putting the blinkers on. In the ninth, I was big on Sam's time. The seven, Sam, Sam Houston, little hunch play maybe. Sam's town. Sam's town. The better killers album. The better one indeed. A <laughs> um, little bit of interest in the eight, uh, but that horse is going to take money too. Uh, the one maybe to throw in there as a possibility, since these are maidens going six furlongs, and then to round it out in the tenth, I would like the ten on top. Um, Seven, six, and then the one A. Yeah, very, very much in agreement there. So I, I do think this is sort of the tough one uh, for mm-hmm. players. So to me, if you can beat 
uh, the the two or si- or excuse me the four or six. You're off to a good start. Yeah, maybe um, with the one. Did you know Screwball is a gal name? I did. I said poor guy. Um, screwball can't screw, <laughs> and has I mean, no balls. <laughs> Just wouldn't be very productive. And that's, also, I'd make quite a change for dollars for free. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's a free roll. Yeah. Maybe if they sent you a drink koozie, you'd start playing. I've played on there before. Well, it's been a long time since I've won. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be doing well today. I'll tell you that. But at least it's free. I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd be losing less there than I have through the paramutual. You want to see how this looks on you? (laughs) You want me to put this on your water bottle? Uh, No, I I, I like the plastic feel. (laughs) I like the, the chemical. Yeah. That's more your style. I'll leave this on my drink. Uh, Emily uh, Gullickson, who, um, along with Andrew and Josh, are probably laughing since my pedigree play ran off the screen at 12 to 1, requests that we not do ping pong tricks on the live feed. So um, That could be fun. We could ruin all the equipment. Y- you know what the problem <laughs> with those are? Like, you know, they do it and it looks easy, but... A lot of times it's like four hours of footage distilled down to 30 seconds of some guy hitting. You don't have four hours to play ping pong with me? Well, I guess we do here because we've, <laughs> well, we've been on for two. So Wow. Okay. We filled up two hours of people's time. We did. never get and, back. And have yet to give out a winner. So <laughs> th- this is it. At 12 to 1, that's a good thing too with racing. Like in, in football and those things, you go four in a row without a win and – it's tough to catch up, but in racing, mm-hmm. twelve to one winner, you're you're ahead of the game. So. Interrupt to hear that five looked a little jazzed up on screen. A little jazzed. A little jazzed, and the seven really does not at all. Mm. My wagering account. Uh, there we go. It's not feeling very jazzed after no, it's getting, earlier. It's getting jazzed. Well, no, that <laughs> that definitely lacks jazz. But do you like jazz? Yeah. No. You know. No. It's not a go-to. Okay. Did they play jazz at the restaurant you worked at? No. We had a very eclectic blend of different um, radio stations that made no sense to the mood of the restaurant. Oh. That were also frequently changing. And one the one I those. hated the most was the Christmas one for December. Did they play Christmas music? They did. Oh. Yeah. But not to your liking? I'm not a big Christmas music fan. Mm-hmm. No. Not even Michael Bublé? No. Mm. No. It's not for me. That's okay. It is. <laughs> I could take early. I like Christmas music better than jazz, I guess. Really? Most controversial opinion you've given out yet. <laughs> I mean, I, jazz live I can get into because, yeah. you know, it's no, a vibe. and. Live. Almost. Right, that's fair. But yeah, it's like popping on a jazz playlist on Spotify is, yeah, I is be doing that either. probably something I'm not going to do. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, looking more and more at this pick six, I think this is another thing I like to think about is there's a pick five coming up. So it's like, okay, what am I expressing in the pick six that adds value to what I could do in the pick five? And given my opinion in this race, I mean, it be great to start a pick six with the two or five. So I guess from an insanity insurance perspective, you might kind of just play there. I'll do that. Right. But yeah. you know, from a like prime play, I think the pick five is, is the better route Value. here. Um, yeah, I would you know, with that. I would say the issue there though is okay. Am I kicking off the pick five with the one to two Asmussen? Yeah, it, you are. That does seem to be in the direction I'm going, but right. so that's where it comes in here. Like, okay, I can pick four. Right. Well, and pick dollar pick threes. Don't sleep on them. Yeah, so, rolling. yeah, we'll uh, we'll just play a insanity style ticket with the uh, lean on the I two mean, and five. I mean, you might as well. Here. You really have nothing to lose. Just the money. <laughs> but mm-hmm. no, I mean, if the two or five win, and it's a good spot. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, it would be. Neither? Yeah, no. you don't like either. Yeah, this was our really this was our either. divergence this was our big for sure. I, I forget who Mark had a horse in here too, didn't he? Did he really? Where did he go? Hmm. Something. Well they're going in the gate. How so what's your what's your play here? Uh if I was playing. Um uh, I would do right. I would do a cold one six 
and then a cold 164 or maybe a 16446 uh, try. I would multi race wagers for the pick six. I'd throw the one four and six if I was playing. One four and six. Mm -hmm. It is only 20 cents and it's not a jackpot. Kudos to Sam Houston for ditching that. Yep. Good luck to everybody that is playing in those uh, pick sixes, regular wagers, all around. I hope you're doing better than Ed and I so far, which wouldn't be that hard to do. No. But we have given out some valuable information, just not a winner. Right. And it ended up that other people were on the same valuable information. Absolutely. Like uh, Hush Hush. Mm -hmm. We weren't the only ones. No, definitely not. Poor Hush Hush. Yeah. Poor Hush Hush is taking a lot, Bubba. Taking a lot of lumps. Taking a lot today. Do we have a late scratch? Oh, do Rabbit's we? Off oh. Six. Uh oh. Wow, that changes things big that time. That would change things a lot. What do we got going on here? Maybe just to lead to the gate. Just being a little bit of a jerk about the gate. Probably just to lead to the gate, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you feel about that at five to two? I don't see it as a big negative. It seems like they were prepared for it. So that seems okay to me. Because if the rider's off and they're walking up like that, then they kind of know that this horse is feeling away about the gate. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm watching go in. We'll see about that. Right. Seemed to go in fine. I, I did, uh, in addition to the, the pick six with two and five, uh, I did play two, five, seven, eight. Exact a box. Um, two, five, seven, eight. Toss, toss the other chalks. Uh, right. Yeah, seven and eight were decent prices. And this might be the most insane thing you've done yet. Well, I, I didn't want to sit here juggling what to do with seven and eight, so just boxing them. And if oh, it's if it's five two, that's uh, so be it. Uh, I guess I better turn this off so we're not arrested. If I'm getting arrested, I want it to be for something good. Yeah, yeah de <laughs> definitely not for bootlegging uh, live Same racing feeds. Right. Surprise the six isn't on the lead. They'll say, ran his, they'll say he ran his race before, uh, beforehand he behind the gate. Not that badly. I've seen much worse. But Screwball. Screwball's out there. Running a very and fast I, open dueling. That's, um, I'll be very surprised if that holds up. Josh is with you on the one. Oh, he likes it? Josh. Josh. Josh, I don't like this opening quarter, <laughs> if it's correct, because sometimes the timing is a... Uh, isn't. We've had some issues. Matt Stahl, our colleague, wrote uh, a piece about that at Horse mm -hmm. Racing Nation. So, time. Uh, just how poorly time racing, really how poorly racing measures time. I'll be very impressed if this time uh, is correct. It like they, holds on. they relaxed. They though. did. He seems well rationed. Rider's sitting okay. Ears are moving around. Now we're being asked to go. As is uh, the two. Yeah, who's not really kinda, making it up just yeah. yet. Screwball seems like he's doing all right. Look at him go. But here come the closers. Second I time. I didn't like getting fan that wide there. Oh, secret circle. Secret uh, circle. <laughs> Down cold. That's Mewson on the turf. How about that? Your horse ran well. Screwball starting to come back. Oh. Yeah, he wasn't going to get there again, but he did, he did good. They were far away from the third Does place. Does Sam Houston have the best finish line in racing? That's pretty That's cool with finish. the star. Yeah. yeah. Well, more the star. Oh, and the gallop out, we got ahead. I wonder what that mm -hmm. means for next time. Screwball is not going off. Is not the favorite ever again, probably. Uh, so let's see. I had seven horses on the grid and uh, the Secret Circle. <laughs> you You... You snipped that one out, at least the pedigree, but... I didn't like this horse at all, but... Your I, pick ran better than mine. Although I will say, at the price, whatever it was, 14 to 1 for the two. I, I would watch no it regrets. next time being pulled up that early, too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Watch it in terms of what? Watch and see how... It, well, you wouldn't watch this, but how it's moving next time. If you're being pulled up that early, it might mean that you're uh, saving your horse from some sort of uh, possible injury or something like that. Interesting. Okay. Or, yeah. Dude, Perfecta ran pretty well. I'm a little disappointed in the six. I will yeah, say. Seemed, that was. I don't know if something bring happened. Bring this back here. Here we well. go. Uh, Dennis Trusty would not have had the three with Monopoly money. Monopoly, which is my favorite board game that came up in the office. Yes, so. we discussed this yesterday, and it was a very important fact to know about Ed. <laughs>
thirty-five thousand dollars in the pick six pool. Uh, I think I saw the early pick four at around eighty. So I'm going to say the pick five. I'm going to say one hundred fifty thousand. Some of which will be mine. It will be. What price was the three? Uh, six to one. Six to one. Six to one. Hmm. Guess my favorite board game. Your favorite board game, uh, Stratego. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Life. Clue. Uh, Have you ever seen I the probably, Clue? You've seen the Clue. Of movie. course. We talk yeah. about this. Tim Curry. Yep. Very yeah. important stuff. All right. So my horse finished second. Neither of us really like the winner. Eight to one. Eight to one. Down like cold. All right. I'm 0 for 5, but the next five are what's most important. <laughs> uh, also because the sixth will be our last live race, so hopefully we'll send everyone out. I think you can get this winner. Hope. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what an anchor. Yes. Uh, can't can't get this one home. Same should, connections, though. This should race. be odds on. Yes. Quick uh, shout out to Nick Cameron. He's doing a great job of I was thinking when I came over, when I said, hey, tell me what's going on in the race, I actually thought like, oh, I haven't actually been able to hear Nick. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen. well, we'll listen out. after. Shout out, Nick. Go, Nick. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, as we've discussed, not a big replay guy, but I was even thinking like, oh, I should go back and listen to the first race, his first, first call. First call. Yeah. And see we'll how have to rewatch the speed to see what was said about all these horses that we talked about, because I'm sure somebody else was talking about things that made more sense than we did. <laughs> I played craps. I rolled dice with Nick. Wow. We lost. I have no idea who Nick is in real life, but I've heard his name many, yeah. many times over the course of my observation while watching at home. So whoever He's you are, a, we'll be friends a, one day. a solid contest player and a friend of Texas racing. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting to see him when I'm down at uh, Sam Houston in a few weeks. Oh, you're going. I'm going. You're leaving me. I'm leaving you. I'm wow. I found, nice. I've already found a uh, ramen place down there I'm going to try. Ooh, I love a good ramen. Got, got tips on some barbecue, so anyone else Seems know? Seems like we need some tips on some racing. We're yeah, not it's, uh, it's fair. Uh, oh. Let's see what uh, these 1 to 10 one to opens up at. And it, it's always tricky with the pick five because... You know, do you do you go with that horse and then, you know, is it worth it versus the pick four? I tend to think yes um, here because of the 12% takeout. Uh, it places like uh, Keeneland that has the four of the five that pays the consolation, even if there's five of five winners. Uh, that is an example of when I will not like to start with an odds on. Mm -hmm. Um I think a lot of people, you know, you go skinnier because, okay, you have an obvious favorite and every console takes away from the main pool. So right. that's a situation where I would actually say, eh, maybe the pick four is better, especially the takeouts are comparable. But since it's 12%, uh, I, I think you're still okay here with, you know, if, if that's your play, then that's fine. Yeah. So, but if you can... If you can beat them, that's where you absolutely want to jump in and, and play. Because oh, if this was a favorite I was against, that would make things so much easier. But it's like, if you take this horse out of this race, who do you like next? It's probably the four light up the devil. I gave the five a little bit of a look. Yeah, I would say it'd be the, the five for me. If, if I was going to pick, it, like, let's take Lady Abe out of here. I would right. say five, four. Does Which anyone else interest you at all? It's a tough race to go out on because uh, it seems so simple, but we're probably dead wrong. Judging by the wind pool, I'm guessing there was a ten thousand dollar win bet, which uh, that's pretty Mark? serious dough. So yeah, <laughs> no super high five for Mark. He's just betting ten grand on on these Asmussens. Um, can you see Cora's face on our stream? Oh, you can. Can you? Yeah. She's in there. This is Cora. Doggo getting some sour punch. Heck yeah. uh, Mike Allen wants to know what you were talking about with the horse being pulled up. Oh, so when you see the race end and the two is being um, slowed down, I guess, more quickly than other horses, like other horses are being allowed to continue forward and finish a gallop out in a way, whereas the two is kind of like being 
you know, slowed down much quicker and being brought back to the barn faster. Like if a horse comes back quickly after a race, it might mean that something might be a little wrong or that they're, you know, just trying to preserve the horse for the next race. It could mean a lot of things, but it's something that I look out for. And so a horse that's kind of allowed to fluidly, you know, finish their gallop out and come back in normal time with the rest of the field. So not so much, uh, no, uh, like this happened, so injury, it means this, but, but more worth seeing what happens next. Then. Right. It's a horse I'd like look out for next time to see if this is just how they do things with this particular horse, where the race is over and that's it. We're wrapped up. We go back to the barn next time. We're going out the same way. Or if this was unusual for that horse and maybe they're, you know, keeping an eye on something going on or the rider felt something a little bit different or whatever the case may be. It's just something that I noticed that looks different than the rest of the field. All right. Well, we'll earmark that for next time. What would be great is if that horse ran back on a Thursday. It would be. And we do this. It again. also would be great if I made a note of it so I remember what I'm talking uh, about. Very good. Uh, With my fans. Are you a virtual stable person? Or? What do you mean? Like, like, do I keep my horses in the computer? Yeah. Not really. No. Just because I use so many different apps and sites and eventually I'll have an iPad and digitize all of this and be smarter about all of it. But right That's now, what this is. And QR code, scan it in. Wow. One day. One day. <laughs> One day. Stick with but me, these are kid. Fun. They are fun. This is fun to look at. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very impressed. <laughs> it's mostly because I get to color. Right. In various uh, hands. Martha Clausen on the uh, Sam Houston feed. Always good to see her. She's been around down there a long time. Six in the middle. Uh, if you're uh, a place better, hopefully most of you are not. $895. 50 cent pick four. Not too bad. Not too Favorites. Bad just one for five. Yeah. No, this is a good start. I think this is going to be a very solid meet. This is very interesting so far. Very, uh, hopefully lucrative as well. We're not there yet. Uh, some of you are, though. That was definitely a nice pick three to start things off. Or excuse mm -hmm. me, pick four. Pick three for a buck, $1,063.40. And uh, that is an example for 50 cents. That's 531-ish, 531.70. So with the pick four, you got a two to five kick things off, and that's about what you got if you kind of think of the pick three, if you would bet that horse to win. Um, so that is sort of an example, more so than the 50 cent pick four. But when thinking about, okay, what do I like in these other races? Are you really getting value out of including the two here, even as a single I don't know. I'm starting. Yeah. I'm starting to wonder now if uh, maybe the pick four is a better focus. I would uh, say so. If this horse wins at these odds, it might be better to put your uh, mark. What do you do? Up. Well, I wanted to ask you: Can you beat this two? Because the track's been playing to outside pressers and closers, and this seven looks really fast. So, isn't the seven going to accompany the two for a long time? I just don't think that horse is good enough. But you could be right. No, it just opens it up for the one four six that are they've been chasing the two home, but the right. one four six are only a couple links behind. Right. But the twos beat the four a couple of times. So when I see that it's like you're never getting there. It's not even like a rivalry. But I mean hey, I don't know. Would you try to beat the two? I'm thinking about it. Do you have some do you have another horse that oh. you know you wanna pop in? <laughs> Uh, well, we'll I mean, switch over. Uh, we can fit three enough. of us. Yeah, yeah, you're good. The uh, my, my quandary here is I just think that the seven is really fast. I don't know. I mean, the two doesn't need the lead, but if the seven accompanies the two for the first, you know, four furlongs, that would put the two in a spot that has not been winning today. You know, as you said, you talked about that. Right. There hasn't been a lot of pace. We've seen horses clear off on the lead on the inside and stop. And so, and we've seen horses roll by on the outside. And I think if you look at the one, four, and six, they've all kind of been chasing, uh, what's her name, Lady Avenue home, you know, a couple links behind, but they just haven't had a setup. So I'm not saying that she's going to get beat, but if, if they get a setup, I think it's going to be a lot closer. I think that's a fair point to make. And I think that if she gets beat, that's probably the way. Yeah. And then like you're well, saying, that, these prices, you got to right. find out. <laughs> and like you're saying, the this is what everything hinges on, right? Do you single the two and go forward or do you try to get around it? I mean, maybe the four is the most likely one, um, you know, to beat her. I mean, she's, I mean, I don't think these odds are going to be 
you know, they, probably, they won't be the same, yeah, but probably cut them in half. Maybe. Right. Did you give the five a look at all? I didn't like the five as much. I was mm-hmm. kind of, again, looking probably a little bit more for something off the page based on what we've seen so far. Yeah. Hmm. But, I don't know. And that, that turf race was weird, right? That three. <laughs> that I'm surprised tough. that the one hung on as well as um, he did with those fractions. Yeah. That was a good race from him. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So anyway, that, I think that, I mean, obviously that's the question for everybody, or I right. guess if you're committed to singling the two here, it's easy, then the question is what, what are the, you know, what are what you going to do? What values later? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a really important point to bring up when you have a short price favorite like this, because it's like, do you just take your chances and go, Hey, I really have this strong opinion. This horse is just, that's it. It's that simple. Yeah. But if you have an opinion to beat this horse, you have to give it a go at these odds. And yeah, especially or, class. yeah, and then, like Edward said, you know, the, do you give it a go in the pick five, like it's <clears> expensive? <throat> um, do you give it a go in the pick three or something like that? Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she's been rolling off the wind, so, I mean, it's you know definitely a horse that's in form and well, well meant. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you all think about the, the rest of the way? I thought race eight was maybe the tougher one, toughest one. Yes, maybe. race eight is... Uh, and that's sort of where a lot of people, okay, I can single here. Um, I think the seven in the next or seven in the ninth will be on a lot of tickets. So then that automatically, I think okay. race eight is tough. You think it's tough. Now all of a sudden that makes the fifth choice in that race, not all that valuable mm-hmm. that's because true. everyone's going to get there right. in equal strength, probably. Right. I didn't really like, I didn't love anyone else in the eighth race other than the three. The three. Yeah. That's Mike C's top pick, too, and I only had as a B. Five or two. That's the one I took a shot with, but I definitely did not spend as much time on the rest of this card as I did the beginning part of it since we're not going to be live for it. Right. Uh, the four on top of the eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have my notes in front of me. I think I had some combination of the three, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gumbo. And uh, yeah, and just you know, like kind of like you were saying, Ed. I mean, this is a race where people are going to go deeper, so that's a good point mm-hmm. when you go back to the, some of the other races. Um, and then if people are going to sing here, then absolutely. Opens up a lot of space on your ticket. Yeah, later. the the outside horses um, were all decent prices, so you know that kind of stuck out to me. And then the eight nine, I, I was like one of those. Well, if I'm spreading, the more I use, the more I kind of feel like I want all corners of the race. If that makes sense, like okay, I think it's wide open. Who knows what's going to happen? So the beggar gives me a front end look. Uh, Wicked Rebel gives me a back end look. They're right. both double digits. Um, right. But you know, if the if the track were playing kind of like how we thought with these dirt sprints going in, then that might be a situation where I'll just take all the prices that are speed. Okay. But especially what we've seen so far, right. I'm very happy that I don't really need to recalibrate because to me, it's there's no conclusion to be drawn. Yeah. 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 What about the last? I like the ten in there. So does Ed. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think the scratch of the four too was was pretty big. I mean, Mister uh, Mister Shapor, uh, you know, an E six on Brisnet, definitely a horse anyone could see the running lines likes to lead. So that that's somewhat significant in my mind. That you yeah. lost a pace. Do you like the, the name on uh, Jenna's Gunrunner? Who's the sire? Service Stripe. <laughs> 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 Although it is, well, it, it's, it's an older, horse. yeah. Okay. But clearly, Gunrunner was was on their mind at the time. I would yeah, think, but he wasn't as right. Wasn't the big so, deal he is now. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, I thought you know maybe some combination of the seven ten there. Mm-hmm. Any paddock impressions? Four is looking a little sleepy. Sleepy's bad, right? Kind of. I like the five a little bit. Let me refresh on why. She looks good. Pick up the phone. I would definitely say five, six for me once you get past the two. Yeah, she just put her ears forward when the rider got on, so 
Simon, she's ready to go. She's moving around pretty well. Are you the my with you mentioning the seven? Are you the the type at all that would say, well, shoot, if the it, like at twenty to one, or maybe it's fifty to one, but if the two doesn't fire at all, then the seven ends up blowing speed. No, I don't think I don't think she's good enough in in that regard to to beat the others or even beat the two on a slow break. Probably come get it. So yeah, more of was, just a chess piece in here. Exactly, exactly. So I'm interested in seeing Nick's picks two one four. Um, I thought it was interesting that I wanted to ask you, Ed, what do you, what do you, with a four off a layoff, when you look at a horse like that, it's been off, what, a few months, and uh, it didn't have many works, but it had a trainer with a decent 20%. Yeah. A sample size of five. And I noticed that uh, Nick. Must be one. <laughs> yeah. And he made a morning line on the four. I believe it was like seven to two, a pretty, pretty low morning line. Right. So I thought, you know, he's anticipating that horse getting a lot of action. So. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's tougher when you're playing tracks you're not quite as familiar with her especially in the beginning of the meet um, and it was frustrating too for a horse player when you see a horse off of six month layoff with one work it's like well how can this horse possibly be ready but obviously in a lot of places like Texas for sure there's d different farms where the horses are right. working and they're just right. not recorded. I was just gonna say it doesn't mean they're not working. Definitely it just not, reported. not reported, but yeah. it's less information to go on for sure, and it kind of leaves you like, okay, but how is this horse really doing? Like, are we actually ready? Like, are we like primed and ready to go exactly. for this race? Is, are we using one? Like, what's the plan here? Exactly. All right, I'll let you guys finish up. All right. That's code for I'm gonna play this pick five. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Without the two. <laughs> hey. I, Props. I mean. Yeah. No, you're that, shooting your shot against Lady Av Avenue Ave, whoever she is. And I think too, is. if I mean, if you like the two, um, and you have any sort of opinion on some others, you know, I mean, we know human nature is. Oh, I love the two. I can spread in other races. I mean, look, if strong opinions. I mean, if you're able to hit a, a pick five that's going to pay a hundred bucks for fifty cents, and you have it for five. I mean, that's a thousand. That's, you know, still the opportunity for a score. So uh, just trying to look through the chat to see if anyone had any strong opinions. I'm waiting for Lewis to say he has the two at even money, but uh, he hasn't chimed in quite yet. But uh, I wouldn't try to beat him. He would not? No. One to, that, one to ten is pretty serious. I wonder if the four has run with uh, back wraps before. Or if that's a new thing coming in off a little bit of a layoff from the freshman. Let me play show. Oh, There's no show wagering, which is interesting for hmm. a seven horse race. So clearly uh, some part. anticipation of uh, Lady Ave taking a bunch of money. Absolutely. Uh, I will say she only has 28% of the place pool. Uh, so that's hmm. somewhat interesting that she's sitting on. Uh, what is that? 80, 80% 80 of the wind pool, but less yeah. than 30% of the place pool in the seven horse field. So um, that always kind of raises an eyebrow when, when the bridge jumpers aren't out on, on an odds on favorite. Right now we're at one to five. One to five. I, I bet she'll be two to five. Yeah. Hmm. Which still not worth the bet, but maybe the, the drift is. I mean, the problem is it's like everyone playing this pick five is – shouldn't say everyone marks not but yeah. i mean if if you're singling too like okay where's where's your separation later right. um you know for me it's it's eight nine and ten yeah in the third leg so, so the way they're warming up i would use her and only her and i think something to bring up too is like if you're playing this pick five and you like the two or you're not against the two and you're going to use the two use just the two right don't use anybody else yeah or make a separate ticket and use other horses if that's what you want to do and spread in different places but don't be like two and then four and then five and the same ticket with of course that that short of a price. right that makes sense i would say the exception to that would be if you are uh single to a very obvious non-favorite elsewhere that's fair i would say Having okay strong opinion elsewhere. i would say okay like yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it would still depend on other legs, but I mean, yeah. let's say you love to 10 to one and that, yeah. you know, is going to be 10 to one in a race where either people are singling another horse or they're spreading. Right. Here, then let's say if you love the five and there was a one to five shot elsewhere, 
that would make sense. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I've moved up to 19th place. Wow. Wow. Do you have the two here? No, I have no one here. Oh, so you'll probably lose some ground if the two. I will wins. lose some ground, but I didn't want to pay that much. For yeah, that's a that three horse. to five. That's expensive. That was an expensive horse to buy. So I sat this one out. The rest of my stable is just the three. He's pretty lucky, and the ten cats second silver in races eight and ten respectively. So we have not told anyone. We are two hours and forty three minutes into a YouTube video. And we've talked about Dude Perfect, who I've watched and seen them do this. We have actually not told anyone to like and subscribe to Good our God, channel. Good God, what's wrong with us? <laughs> Clearly not the influencers we thought we were. I haven't even told anyone my Twitter name. That's true. Oh, gosh. Everyone knows it. Anyway. Well, if they like and subscribe, <laughs> they'll see more of you and they can get it that way. Right. Please do that. Uh, Horse Racing Nation, you're already on the channel if you're watching. So mm -hmm. I think the kids say smash that like button. Do they? And you're closer to the kids than me. Well, the kids um, are younger than me, so maybe. Yeah. Smash right. it. Sm Let's go. <laughs> Hashtag smash it. <laughs> smash the like button. Subscribe. Uh, you'll get all our great updates. Uh, post a lot of other videos, too. Uh, Horse Center very popular on here so uh be able to access well you can access it anyway but you'll be aware made aware much easier based on the algorithm yes, of all that great yes. content you can have all the tips and tricks like and subscribe all right i i, I am going to play this pick five because I, I feel like lake three leaning on those four horses when others see it as a, as a deep race as an opportunity you're singling here i am singling here. yeah i think you should i am singling here so We'll see what we can do in, mm -hmm. in the others. but um, yeah. Are you going to give out your Twitter handle for everyone that doesn't know it? EJXD2. That's it. I hit 21,000 followers today. Ooh. Yeah. I'm at Outrun the Odds, and I hit 1,000 the other day. You hit a th that, was a, <laughs> that was a pretty quick ascent. It was. I've only been on Twitter for like three months. You know the first horse I ever talked about on my Twitter? Lexitonia? Nope. I know that wasn't the answer. Uh, Hidden Connection? Nope. Before or after September. that? So I'm, I had the timing right. September. Because you were you went to Churchill. Oh, yeah, that's true. Wasn't, yeah, Fauci. Wow. Yeah. Do you know why? Uh, you're a Wesley Ward fan? No. Um, I was at Saratoga on my birthday, which was uh, August 11th with a friend of mine, his sister. And I had been planning to bet on Momos in whatever stakes race that was on the turf. And it was really hot that day. And he just looked super washed out and not really feeling it. And I'm watching in the paddock and I'm like, you know what? I really don't like that horse, Fauci. He was number two that day. And I was like, but he looks so good. And I placed a $200 win bet on him and he lost by a nose to a recipe red. who then came back to win a couple times, I think. Uh. Yep. <laughs> A nose, at like, what was he that day? 200, was that like bringing my tip money and making a score? Yeah. $200 cash wow. bet to win, lost by a nose. And is that what uh, got you into betting place and show? No. After that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm into that. It's just sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm at work. Spirit grabs you. Yeah. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I keep missing the will pay. I, I Somewhat interested in the, the, the two six here, uh, with the six, six being a clear sort of co fourth choice with the rest. All right. So, yeah, something. Hmm. All right. Pick five is go. in. Want to read the whole ticket? I did uh, two, two with three, four, six, seven. Okay. With four, eight, nine, ten, which that's the hopeful separation six, seven, uh, in a race. Four, I expect eight, a lot of people seven. to. No three, huh? Yeah. yeah. So no favorites. Okay. Uh, one, four, six, seven, eight, and one, six, seven, eight, ten. For how much? Two hundred. Two hundred. Two bills. You got the two hundred in your head. I, after I, I stopped betting. I stopped betting after those first two races. So save that some money. Yeah, which, bankroll. Not saying that's the right way to play. If if I had an opinion, I would have bet. Yeah. It's not like I was. Oh, I was wrong. I can't right. bet. But you know, I was okay. Mm -hmm. Let's 
tap the brakes. Don't need to bet every race. Um, yeah. But nice control. I do corner. think uh, I do think there's an opportunity with those outside horses in Lake Three. That you know, it, yeah. it two hundred. Uh, you know, basically a. I don't want that pick four to hit and the two to have lost mm -hmm. um, because that's bad. Turn off so we don't but at one to two, I'm basically saying, uh, you know, I need this horse to pay more than I need the pick five mm -hmm. to pay more than 300. So okay. let's right, see if, let's uh, see if, she can see do if it. Lewis chimed in with that. Nope. Uh, disco partner. Here? Are we on every week? We are, which is why you want to like and subscribe. Yes. So you can tune in for more of this and fun and excitement. Know. They're off. They're off. This is the last race we'll be watching together. Wow. Until next week. Until next time. Unless we're both here when Turfway starts tomorrow. Eh, no, I won't be here at 6.15. Yeah, I, I hope <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> All right, well, the two's in front. Surprise. Two in front. That means the odds drop to 1 to 10 is coming. <laughs> I mean, can she buck the speed issues? That's the, and uh, this is uh, is this is a three-way duel here? No, no just two one seven. dropped out of it. Um, Mark yeah. was right, though. Seven. Seven's uh, pressing. It does seem like Stewart's pretty comfortable, though, with, oh, yeah, with how he's sitting. Chilly. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't even asked anything yet. He's going a little pretty wide, so I wonder if he's kind of in tune to how the track seems to be playing, and now he just says, let's go. Play, did you play 2-6? Uh, the less said about that, the better. <laughs> well, you might uh, not get it anyway. It, it, it looked really, up. it looked really good when you asked me that, but uh, yeah. yeah. Then okay, it, good. Yep, you made the right choice. I made the right choice. Two one. That one went way, way out of there, and then came back. That was very odd. Just kind of like lost total interest. Four to five. Four to five. Okay, that's what quite, quite the drift. Yeah. I, I oh, would actually. See how she's going out with her ears, just back forth, back forth. She she's got plenty left. I would go so far as to say that four to five was probably maybe even worth a win bet. Maybe on a horse that was that much of a sure thing for the entire card. I mean, it's three to five on the morning line, which I agreed with. Yeah. And you usually when you see three to five on the morning line, that means two to five, which I thought Thank was you, possible. That's right. We did Bye -bye. it. <laughs> <laughs> the the ROI still in the red, We're but uh, about four we, to five we are at least uh, in the positive ledger. Uh, I, I'm actually very surprised that that horse is four to five. Me too. Maybe you'll get a decent payout on this pick five when you hit. That would be nice. It would be nice. I like that. Yeah, so, I do like that. Well, is this uh, it? And this is it. Wow. Uh, we had so much fun. It's. Uh, I guess we could say we're going out on a winning note, we're which going is good. Out on a high. But. Uh, I love it. We'll encourage one to visit uh, after they smash that like button and uh, caress the subscribe button. They can visit <laughs> picks.horseracingnation.com slash sam-houston-picks. Wow. Sam-houston-picks. Uh, harder to say, easier to type in. If you just go to Horse Racing Nation, you'll find it. But a reminder, we have uh, that uh, good information on the uh, just the meet preview, looking at trainers and shippers and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And every day, free power picks uh, for Sam Houston uh, for uh, every day at the meet. So check that out. Check us out. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. What do we got coming up? I have the Turfway Pick 5 tomorrow, the carryover. I'm probably going to take a look at that Gulfstream uh, mandatory payout pick 6 on mm. Saturday. Which I don't know if that was just announced today or if that was old news and I just heard about it's it. News today. to me. But that's pretty exciting. There's a stakes race there on the turf. Yeah. Saturday. Take a look at that. Uh, and you're going to be on Andrew's podcast. I'm going to be on a couple of things next week. I you're going to be on Andrew's Ron's podcast. podcast. Ron's podcast. This stream. I got to get it together this weekend. And we got to get uh, Josh, Josh Cherry Drink. Now we need to do on his. Josh, Andrew, Ron. And I could just say it was seen into the future. I didn't mix up their names. Absolutely. Just, you manifested it. Uh, I did call him Andrew, though. So that that's a mistake that can't be spun, unfortunately. We've all done it. That's fine. We have. We've no, that's true. Great Listen, mistakes. I, uh, I called Norm uh, by his uncle's name. Who I, Cassie? Yeah. Now I can't even remember what his uncle's name is, but this is when he was first coming on the scene with Mark. Mm. Um, okay, wait, let's see. Is happens. Steve there? Do you think Steve is there in Texas? 
Uh, looks I, like the rest of his family I is there, but uh, <laughs> oh, Steve there, is that him? I don't, I don't think he was there. Wow. Yeah, Steve, if you're there, hey, hey, all right. Well, Sarah, it's a pleasure. Welcome to the team. Thank you so much. This is fun. Yeah, Good very fun. I made fun of you a little bit. Uh, you, you give and take. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm shocked that 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 horse paid 360. That was very um very intriguing indeed. And I'm also shocked that, uh, so this is interesting. I didn't, was not aware of this. You may remember I said there was no show wagering. Yet there was. There are show payouts. Naira bets barred show wagering. Ah. And that is up to the bet taker because they are on the hook. Okay. And that very much explains why the plate, remember I was like, why is the place pool? Hmm. And it's because if you were bridge jumping, of course I you would see. bet to show, not okay. to place. So. Are we, get, get, are we plugging Niagara bets? No, it was just what I was looking at. Oh. Just citing my source. I'm a big yes, believer in absolutely. that. absolutely. Big believer. Uh, always credit the photographer. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do. We so, do. all right. Well, right subscribe, like, like. Follow us on Twitter. All that good stuff. Next HR time. underscore nation, mm -hmm. horseracingnation.com. We'll see you next week. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Au revoir. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, eh. uh.